And here we go. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome on this lovely sunny um, afternoon. We're so happy that, uh, that you could join us. Uh, just want to let you know that uh, we have all counselors in attendance, and we also have our staff, senior staff in attendance, our CAO, Rob Armstrong, our clerk, Matt Smith, and our treasurer, Darcy Chapman, and our director of transportation services, Tori Perimabida. So welcome council, welcome senior staff, and our listening public as well, um, and our delegations who will be participating in this first ever virtual public meeting. We do live in interesting times. We've had many unusual experiences and changes to the way we do things. And this is one of them, experiences that may lead eventually to changes in the way we all conduct a business. So with that, I will ask you to join me in a moment of uh, reflection as we consider the uh, business of the corporation. Thank you for that. Uh, so uh, is there any disclosure of uh, pecuniary interest in the general nature there uh, around the table? Seeing none, we will move right into um, participation, um, public participation. And this is a public meeting um, that uh, is held virtually for the first time. And so um, there, uh, we welcome everyone's comments as they come forward uh, through ele electronic means or telephone. And um, we certainly welcome those who are participating uh, via YouTube or listening in and uh, those delegates who are going to speak to us today. So with that, um, I will just speak a minute about our, our uh, delegations that we're going to be hearing next. We have nine deputations scheduled, each of which will have five minutes for their presentation. And after that, uh, there will be questions uh, from, of clarity on these presentations from council. Uh, it must be relevant, of course, to each uh, speaker's presentation as we go forward. So with that, um, the other thing I just wanted to mention was the deputations have all been ordered alphabetically. So the first one off the mark is Anna Bandersky. So welcome, Anna. There will each time be a short pause while we uh, get everybody organized, um, but Anna is uh, now on the call. And if you'd like to unmute yourself, Anna, then you'll be able to speak. Yes, hello. Uh, hello, Mayor. Uh, hello, uh, members of council. Uh, my name is Anna Benderska and I live in Meaford by Memorial Park. Uh, when I heard about the TC Energy proposal as Canada's largest climate change initiative, I was excited to hear about a green project coming to Meaford. I have a degree in sociology from the University of Toronto and was imagining the benefits and eagerly researching the proposal. Uh, after doing my research, I promptly joined Save Georgia Bay. Today, I am asking council to oppose the proposal for the sake of the environment, our economy, our community, and our national treasures, the Georgian Bay and Niagara Escarpment. Uh, when researching the project, there were many environmental, social, and economic factors to consider. However, all I needed to do was focus on the big picture to see the many flaws of this project. This so-called green project will actually use 30% more energy than it produces. However, it's being marketed as a green initiative. How can something that uses more electricity than it generates be green? The definition of the word inefficient is wasting or failing to make the best use of time or resources. The Clean Air Alliance published a report that states Hydro-Quebec's reservoirs are the best flow balancing option for Ontario. By investing approximately $80 million to build a new 20 kilometer transmission line in Ottawa, Ontario could increase its electricity exchange capability by 2000 megawatts. In contrast, TCE is proposing to build a $3.3 billion PSB which will increase our peak day capacity by only 1,000 megawatts. The TCE proposed project is inefficient. And there are many other more environmentally green technologies out there. 
So how is a project that consumes 30% more electricity than it generates green? When we look at the big picture, we also have to look at the future and what will happen to this plant when it needs to be decommissioned. TCE was asked this question and said it, said it will be decommissioned by following the laws of the time. However, if TCE is no longer the owner of the plant at that point and say a shell company in Belize without any assets is the owner, we, the taxpayers, will be handed the bill for decommissioning and it is not one we will be able to afford. Once this plant is built, it will scar the Niagara Escarpment and Georgian Bay forever. Looking at the big picture, we also have to look at TCE's motivation for this project. They are not in the business of environmental protection, of supporting local economies, or of building attainable housing. They are in the business of making money for their shareholders. This project will capture electricity at low peak hours and sell it back to us at high peak hours. It uses what, uh, what TCE calls wasted energy, but by their definition, wasted means exported to the US to offset the reliance on coal. To TCE, this is wasted electricity because TCE is not making money off it. This is not a green project and it does not benefit the Ontario ratepayer, it benefits TCE. If we look at the big picture, we need to look beyond Canada's borders and learn lessons from past mistakes. The Ludington PSP was built over 50 years ago when they didn't have the technology alternatives we do today. Since then, the US and Europe have stopped building open systems, system PSPs. Looking at the big picture, TCE is not in the business of building attainable housing. And I would caution council about any optimism that TCE will contribute adequate attainable housing to the community. Workers' housing tends to be built extremely quickly and intended for temporary residents. They are frequently portables in a field. Attainable housing, on the other hand, needs to be built carefully with cooperation of government, experienced planners, and social workers. It needs to be evenly distributed throughout the community to prevent the development of pockets of poverty or blind spots where vulnerable members of society are further isolated and marginalized. Tempor temporary housing built by a corporation like TCE will not solve an attainable housing problem and will leave us with more complicated problems instead. A plant like this will change the demographic makeup of Meaford. Right now, fishing and tourism are the keys to our economy, factors that will be negatively impacted by this project. Our natural beauty and peace are Meaford's differentiating factors. If we lose these qualities by building a massive PSP, people who can afford to leave Meaford will do so, and people will stop moving to Meaford as well. Housing values will drop, and the municipality will lose revenue generated from property taxes. This has happened time and again throughout history, such as the gold rush towns of the past. TCE recently announced some meaningful design changes, but the fact remains that this plant will ultimately use more energy than it produces and negatively impact the environment of our community. Is it worth sacrificing so much for the benefit of the corporation? And is it worth jeopardizing the Niagara Escarpment in the Georgian Bay? I know the municipality is in a tough position by not having any official say on the project. However, TCE will have to use municipal roads, purchase land and need land rezoned. They will also be causing light and noise pollution during operations and construction. And we, as we will be impacted by this project, we should have a say. I am imploring council to focus on the big picture and oppose the planned PSP. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Uh, are there any questions for Anna from council? Okay. Oh, yes, we have Councillor Bell. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, thank you, Anna, for your uh, presentation. Uh, you have stated uh, very clearly that this uh, project will consume 30% more power uh, than what it produces. Can you uh, give me uh, where you obtained that uh, stated comment from? Yes, that was in the uh, initial documents posted on the TCE website. It is from their uh, project plans. Thank you. Anything further from Council? Okay, seeing none, I will thank you again, Anna, and thank we'll you. move on to Tom Buck. I'm testing my audio, is that working? You are live, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council for your time and attention today. My name is Tom Buck and I'm president of the Cedar Avenue Sunnyside Beach Road Association and a team member of Save Georgian Bay. 
In studying the draft report, we have a number of comments. Mine are mostly re related to the proposal as, as a development project. The report from pages two on set the requirement for council support at a very high level, and that's just where they should be. I wanna quote from page two of the report. The proposal should have or could have impacts on lands that are affected by the official plan and therefore it should be evaluated in accordance with the goals and objectives and other policies of our official plan. To our team, this makes great sense and it's very important for all parties to consider, including the Department of National Defense. The project is a system with many components, the turbine plant, the water demand and flow, the reservoir, the flood zone, the high tension lines, construction process and more must all be considered together to allow a balanced response for the DND and the community. We absolutely agree that recommendation three on page one, engaging a project manager with knowledge and experience is vitally important. However, in recommendations one and two, we were very concerned about the use of two particular words, addressed and approval. We also believe an additional recommendation is needed protecting areas of the municipality which are adjacent to or extend the proposed plant. Our interpretation of address provides latitude to TCE for effort toward meeting expectations. These may fall short and then would be addressed by we tried. The word address allows failure, negotiation, and moderation. We were very pleased when we heard the TCE project director state more than once at their presentations, if this will harm the environment, TCE will not do the project. He did not say we will try not to harm the environment. Let's make sure we all hold TCE accountable to that commitment. Our suggestion is that alternative language needs to be used, making it abundantly clear that the munici municipality expects the requirements in the report be met. The word approval seems out of place with regard to development projects. In my experience as a former council member, the planning process would have to be followed diligently in order to get to a point where a term like approval would be offered to a proponent. The municipality must take responsibility for those parts of the geography, including water and land, which are not part of the DND property. This must factor into your recommendations to the DND. What will be the structure and path for the high tension lines? What is the design and structure of the reservoir? What protections will exist for the people and property who reside and work at levels below the dam? Recent reservoir and dam breaks bring this into light. The proponent initially claimed this was a good location because it was isolated and remote, implying no one lived near the site. TCE's initial shoreline depictions greened out the homes along the shoreline. This was deceptive and inaccurate. Over 200 residences are in this potential flood zone and hundreds of people at risk are counting on the municipality and you to protect them. How would the quality of life of Meaford residents be protected during construction and operation of the facility? What chemicals will be used in tunnel drilling and how will, um, how will turbidity in the water be prevented during in-water construction work? How will storm water runoff be managed? to prevent problems for those living and working adjacent to the site? How will construction dust be contained and prevented from permeating the regional atmosphere? Now, we're encouraged by the proponent's progress moving the intake offshore and the plant underground. Wonderful changes. There's still much work to do though to make sure that these changes meet your requirements protecting the environment and residents from construction efforts effects or a break in the dam and details on the high tension lines are needed. Save Georgian Bay continues to oppose the project. We have provided alternative language. We hope you'll review that. Thank you again for continuing to engage with our group and the community. Your municipal staff has been terrific to work with. Base your comments. Can't hear me. We'll mute it, Madam Mayor. So if you want to say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Tom. I appreciate your, your comments and uh, uh, the recommendations that you put forward and the receiving your report uh, uh, before times. I'll ask now if there's anyone on council that uh, wishes to have a, a question for Mr. Buck. 
And I don't see any. So with that, I will thank you again. And we'll move on to Mr. Peter Crane. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? We can, yes. Mr. Crane. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Councillors, for allowing me to make a presentation to your uh, council. I wanted to take the opportunity to highlight uh, what uh, D&D is doing uh, and uh, what our considerations are in, uh, in trend, uh, TCE's proposal. I uh, thought I might start off with a little bit of a, uh, a policy background and where we are. Water power generation on Crown lands is covered by the Dominion Water Power Act. That's administered by the uh, Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs uh, Department. And they are responsible under that act for granting of uh, priority permits, interim licenses and final licenses. Uh, the act also stipulates that uh, any land that's used for uh, a uh, water power generation uh, project like this must remain in the custody of the federal government. Uh, D&D uh, follows a federal policy suite uh, for the policy of uh, management of real property. Uh, what that means is that uh, we can only use uh, property that is uh, for our program purposes, that is for the uh, defense of Canada and the training of uh, uh, the training of our uh, soldiers, sailors and air, uh, airmen and women. Um, anything excess to that is declared as a surplus. We're not declaring me for surplus, we're training people there and we will continue to train uh, folks there into the future. Um, the Constitution Act plays a role here. We have a duty to consult uh, with uh, First Nations uh, when we're contemplating a decision of this, uh, of this magnitude. And uh, as part of that uh, consultation or in concert with that consultation, we also uh, felt it was prudent to notify uh, surrounding communities uh, and, asso and associations that uh, we were contemplating this. So uh, Meaford uh, Council would have received a letter in June of 2019, uh, informing them that uh, D&D was considering TC TCE's proposal. The Impact uh, Assessment Act uh, of Canada, uh, administered by the Impact Assessment uh, Act Agency under uh, Environment Canada, is responsible uh, to work uh, to make a, uh, an in-depth assessment as to the, uh, the pros and cons of a proposal like this uh, on behalf of the Government of Canada. So a number, uh, a number of years ago, uh, TransCanada approached D&D uh, requesting permission to do feasibility studies on the Meaford uh, lands. And that was because the base has specific geographic uh, attributes, uh, namely a uh, significant height differential uh, related uh, close to a body of water and also a uh, close to a, the power grid uh, to make a determination whether their project would be feasible. As part of that, they applied to uh, CERNA under the Dominion Water Power Act for a priority permit, which granted them uh, exclusive access to conduct their feasibility studies. Uh, the base, uh, we have inherently dangerous activities going on on the base, as you well know, so we arranged with uh, TransCanada to furnish them an access agreement, uh, which uh, controlled their access provided uh, for their safety uh, using uh, guides and, uh, and whatnot uh, for their fe feasibility studies. Concurrently, d, &D under is undertaking to uh, do an impact assessment uh, based on uh, d and requirements, uh, largely on our ability to continue training uh, Canadian Forces personnel on the base, but also to assess our uh, short, medium, and long-term liabilities if this project were to proceed uh, on the base, looking at the security implications, the financial implications, and public policy benefits, not to make a judgment on them, but to understand what uh, the benefits are, uh, as there is a uh, uh, an intended greenhouse gas reduction uh, of, of resulting from this project. Uh, we're also engaging to do a technical review of the feasibility studies. I would also say that we're doing some environmental uh, uh, study as well, but this is not to replace the work that is uh, done under the uh, Impact Assessment Act, but rather to uh, uh, measure the implementability of our operational impact. So we're assessing whether we're going to be able to continue to train uh, military personnel on the base. Uh, if we were to accommodate a project like this, it will necess necessitate moving ranges and other infrastructure. So as we develop uh, what that might look like, we need to do environmental studies to find out whether we can actually move a range or a uh, building uh, and uh, not disturb uh, some of the species at risk in its place. So that's the uh, scope of our environmental studies. I would look at this as a, uh, as a, on, a on a time continuum with a number of milestones and where TCE uh, initially came up with a proposal 
And then uh, there's a uh, feasibility studies on their part and the impact uh, operational impact assessment on the part of D&D that then, then leads to a decision, uh, decision point uh, for, for both TCE on their feasibility, whether to proceed with their project or not, and for D&D as to whether the project can uh, uh, be, could be accommodated on uh, defense lands without impacting uh, training. If those were to be both affirmative or positive responses, then the project would proceed to an impact assessment. And that's uh, under, the, uh, under the auspices of the Impact Assessment uh, Act. There's five phases to that uh, where uh, public uh, consultation and uh, public engagement uh, plays a key role. It could take up to three years or, or longer. And that results in a uh, Government of Canada decision on whether the project would go forward or not, then followed by uh, construction and operations. As I draw to a close here, I would leave uh, you with uh, a number of thoughts. Uh, first of all, is that the, uh, it's the role of the Impact Agency uh, of Canada to assess uh, the positive and negative aspects of the project or a proposal like this, informed by public engagement, consultation, studies, effects, and benefits. D&D is uh, limited in scope to making a determination whether the project could be accommodated on the base uh, while, a, while still permitting our function of training uh, uh, Canadian Armed Forces personnel there. D&D is not a proponent of this project and nor are we a partner with TCE in this project. Meaford is not surplus lands. Meaford will continue to train Canadian Armed Forces personnel into the future and the lands will remain under uh, federal custody uh, throughout uh, whether the proposal is picked up or not. I would, uh, I'll finish here, but thank you very much for allowing me to uh, speak and uh, on behalf of Defence to let you know uh, what we are, what we're doing in the consideration of TCE's proposal. Our turn to thank you very much, uh, Mr. Crane, for, uh, for your time today and for your uh, uh, introduction to <laughs> D&D uh, rules and regulations with this, in this regard. Um, I will ask uh, our council if there are any questions for Mr. Crane and his presentation. Uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Shirley Keveney. Thank you very much, Your Worship. And uh, Mr. Crane, please know how much I appreciate the information you have provided us today. It may be too soon to ask, but I'm wondering if there's anything at all you can share with this council in relation to um, what a potential lease situation might look like. You've said the lands would be uh, retained uh, by the uh, Department of National Defense and the federal government. So I just wonder if there's anything at all you can share in that regard. By all means, under the Dominion Water Power Act, uh, there would be a final license granted, which would allow uh, TC Energy to use uh, the land uh, for a uh, for a long for a, a specified length of time, um, the consideration for that is not yet determined, uh, and the uh, the authorities for granting that are not yet determined. But that would be the uh, that would probably be the vehicle uh, by which the land would be uh, retained in the federal uh, in the federal custody, uh, but uh, with use permitted to uh, uh, to a third party. Thank you for that. And uh, Councillor Tony Bell. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, thank you, Mr. Crane. Um, you've said a couple of times that the, um, the area remains under the custody of the federal government. Uh, now, do you know what that will do to the municipality for payment in lieu of taxes, or is that not something that you are abreast of? Uh, that is not something that uh, I've assessed uh, at this point, but it's something I'll take note of uh, and explore further. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Harley Greenfield. Th thank you, Your Worship. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Crane. Uh, I was uh, wondering if the DND was going to be represented today, and I uh, appreciate you coming forward. And, uh, and giving your uh, presentation. Um, I don't know if you can answer this or not, but can you give us an idea of how long ago it was that DND was first approached by TC Energy uh, with, this, uh, with this idea? The first time I would have been engaged in that would have been in about 2017. There may have been some lower level discussions uh, prior to that. Thank you. 
Okay, and, and I have a, a question for you, Mr. Crane, if you may. And I understand completely that your core um, business uh, operation at uh, our Meaford base is training uh, military personnel. But I also understand that uh, the Department of National Defense has been given direction uh, to involve us as an environmentally responsible and sustainable organization according to your defense energy and environment strategy. Um, so my question is, and you've mentioned that there's limited uh, involvement with the environmental analysis and uh, um, studies that will be going on. At what point will the Department of National Defense become involved in the uh, environmental assessment process? And uh, would it be another, perhaps another department that would take that on? Yeah, so if defense were to make a, uh, a decision in the affirmative and that uh, the project or the proposal could be accommodated on, uh, on the Meaford lands, uh, then the responsibility to lead the impact assessment where the uh, detailed environmental assessments would be uh, done would transfer to the uh, ECCC or Environment Canada. Uh, and that process would be led by uh, the impact agency or the impact assessment agency of Canada. D&D &D would continue to be a participant in that, um, but uh, we would not be the lead on that. We are the lead on making that first initial decision, uh, which has the operational impacts on the Canadian Armed Forces. Sure. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Is there anything further from Council? Okay. Seeing none, then we will move on to Mr. Robert Greenfield. Thank you very much. Am I good to go, Matt? You are indeed. Good afternoon, Mayor Compass, Councilors, and staff. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to express my concerns about the proposed TCE project. To begin with, I want to say that I understand that our council has very little control over the outcome of this proposal. I also want to acknowledge that TransCanada Energy has greatly contributed to the North American economy over many decades, and that it has every right to explore all possible means of developing projects that will generate income for it as a company and profits for its investors. As I think about this grand project, I would like to ask if it is unreasonable to suggest that there may be little, if any, benefit to the municipality of Meaford, not even as a tourist attraction because of whose property it will be built on. As much as we might want to applaud TCE's announcements of their support for our local economy when it comes to purchasing construction material and providing a labor force, is it realistic that could we even begin to meet these needs? Because of the scale of this pump storage system, it is logical to think that most of the labor and material needs will be imported from great distances. For example, can anyone think of an aggregate pit in the former St. Vincent and Sydenham townships that could come up with the gravel needed to make all their concrete? Will they be coming to town to buy boxes of three inch Ardox nails and pick up truckloads of two by fours from Scott Knight? How about brooms and shovels purchased from Martin Rice? Or perhaps you're hoping it would be the 200 to 400 new families that will flood into Meaford that will give our local economy a boost. And when they come, where are they going to be able to buy or rent housing in Meaford or in the townships? And what are they going to do when the project is completed in four years? Work in the local orchards? Will we be faced with apple harvest craft show traffic on the streets of Meaford five days a week? What can we expect with regards to volume and types of vehicles, moving workers and material on the two main roads to the site? What kinds of delays and safety challenges will we be faced with? Four years is a long time to be putting up with a steady flow of semis hauling gravel. I'm really wondering though, if we are not beginning to experience another expropriation. An expropriation that surely will take away the rights of landowners all along the power line corridor. An expropriation of our ability to drive, walk, cycle and move farm equipment safely on our roads and streets. An expropriation of people's dreams of retiring here. An expropriation of people's enjoyment of their property, their privacy and outdoor space. An expropriation of their life savings investments due to devaluation of property. An expropriation of a known and expected level of peace and quiet in the countryside. An expropriation of the little power that we have as individuals by a very big corporation. An expropriation of our trust in our local government to believe that they are truly there for us and not selling us out for a few doggy treats that TCE might toss our way if we sit or roll over and play dead at their command. An expropriation of the beautiful skyline to the Northwest as we view the well-trained Niagara Escarpment. 
and expropriation of the pristine, ever-changing colors, pure quality and movement of Georgian Bay, an expropriation of fish and wildlife habitat, an expropriation of the hope that if the land was never to be returned to the settling families, that it forever remain a virtually undisturbed natural habitat, an expropriation of our sanity as we wonder how TCE will be getting away with bending the environmental rules that we couldn't get away with, an expropriation of our faith in any level of government that will hold TC accountable to keeping their word. The expropriation of our future safety should, God forbid, there be a breach in the structure. Harleys and my great grandfather, Samuel Greenfield, came from Ireland in the 1850s and settled on the western boundary of St. Vincent near Morley. My grandparents, Robert and Laura Greenfield, farmed from about 1909 to 1922 near Cape Rich. Although they had moved to me for two decades before the 1942 expropriation, they still had many ties to the community there. My family is a long time removed from that area, but still on occasion, there is a pull at my heart to return to Mountain Lake and Cape Rich. I am sure that there are many other descendants of the families who are expelled from the land would feel the same as I do. They, like myself, wonder, why is it that the land can be turned over to a mega company, but not returned to the original families or even to those members of our indigenous community? In conclusion, I ask our council, who in the end is truly going to benefit from this? I don't believe it will be our municipality. Perhaps it might only be the ruling council at the time of completion when they will be invited for the grand opening, a celebration at the top of the dam with its spectacular view of Georgian Bay and the Big Head River Valley toasting and dining while they observe the first official royal flush of TCE's high profile 375 acre toilet. But you can be certain that TC will be a winner as they play the on peak off peak electricity price and carbon credits trading game in order to display their climate change virtual signaling. Oh, and Tim Hortons for sure as they sell coffee and donuts to the 800 workers taking their breaks. Thank you again. I'm muted again. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Greenfield. Appreciate your comments. Uh, I'm asking uh, council if there are any comments from council. Any questions for you? And seeing none, um, we will move on now to Sherry uh, Kartechner. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Council members and staff. Um, I, uh, I'm in awe of uh, the previous speakers. Um, mine, mine is more heartfelt message, um, being that Meaford is my uh, primary residence and it is a town that I love dearly. Your first primary duty is to be representative of your residents and to govern in their best interests as imposed by the Ontario Municipal Act. How have you considered or protected the families who have resided in this municipality paying taxes through the decades since having their land expropriated in 1942? This action was executed to enhance our military, not to allow a private company to make money from this land. Your inaction and disrespect of the families, past, present, and future, is appalling. How have you, the municipal government, engaged or educated your constituents about this project? Secrecy at the onset, followed by ignoring the obvious disapproval of this proposal at each of the information sessions put on by TC Energy. The beautiful four-page double-sided color newsletter for May 2020 not one printed word about this project. Did you consider learning about the devious company with its horrendous track record of environmental infringements and doing your due diligence of informing your constituents about all of the ramifications of this project? This colossal project requires our input. How about a vote? You have a duty to govern in our best interests. Shore wells, drilled wells, Clean water is essential. How can you give your consent to this project having the potential to destroy our waters? The economy of the municipality of Meaford depends in large part on tourism and attracting visitors and new residents. We have very little industry, but we do have rolling hills, forests, the Niagara Escarpment, 
and the crystal clear waters of Georgian Bay. Whereas most rural communities, sorry, um, my dogs were barking. Um, whereas most rural communities, including Lidington, are losing people. We are growing due to these physical attributes. This project does not fit in our community. It is incompatible with the municipality's strategic priorities and long-term vision. Deferring the decision to DND and placing the responsibility to inform your residents in the slimy, manipulative hands of TC Energy is negligent on your behalf, I believe. You are to be representative of us, the taxpayers, not TC Energy and their shareholders. Don't hand over our beautiful town of Meaford on a gold, silver, or bronze tray. Do what is in our best interest. Misleading antics of this company is atrocious. Their propaganda claims they listened. If they did, they would be gone. Lead our municipality into the future where growth, housing prices, and tourism flourish, not drown. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Kartechner. I will ask uh, council if there's any comments or any uh, questions for your presentation. And Councillor Vickers. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, and uh, I'd like to, I'm a little astounded by some of the comments you've made about uh, mm -hmm. TCE. And uh, I, I really wish there was some way we could somehow uh clarify and, and make sure what you're saying about uh, this company is actually true so can you can you give me some idea how you've came up with uh with these ideas of, of tce and where you got your information uh about um, some of the things you just said sure so if you, it's quite easy looking on the web and looking at tc energy and the company that it was prior the infringements, the environmental infringements, the lawsuits that they uh, have been in and continue to be in. Uh, we can look at expropriation of land, um, them suing the landowners in Nebraska, which um, will be happening here when the hydro lines go in. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, from the research that I have done, I find TC Energy, um, moral compass um, non-existent. Thank you for that, Ms. Kartechner. I don't think we'll, uh, we'll hear any more of uh, definitely uh, the company or anybody else in our uh, presentations here. Uh, we'll move on now to Mr. Kindersley, uh, Rupert Kindersley. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Excellent. So my name is Rupert Kindersley. I'm the executive director of the Georgian Bay Association. We have around 3,000 families as members on the north and east coasts of Georgian Bay. The reason we are interested in this project is that we uh, anticipated, particularly based on the initial designs, that it would have a Georgian Bay wide impact it is also the largest civil engineering project that has come up in our uh, history, which is uh, 103 years we've been in existence now. Um, and we are always, uh, we always look closely at any large project on Georgian Bay, wherever it is, um, that may have a significant impact on the environment. So uh, our main objective um, is that if this project does go ahead, the environmental impacts are minimized and that all those involved, um, including government and, the, and Meaford and uh, Save Georgian Bay and others, uh, ensure that uh, TC Energy, if they do go ahead with this project, puts in the maximum possible environmental mitigation measures to uh, reduce the impact on such things as turbidity, uh, fish mortality, fish habitat, species at risk, 
uh, currents in Georgian Bay um, because the massive outflow from this, which is uh, 42% of the outflow over the Canadian side of the Niagara Falls each time they pump water up, up and down, so in and out. Um, in any event, we have... Uh, we have been quite active on this file uh, since we became aware of it. We have worked closely uh, with Save Georgian Bay. We have a particular uh, common contact there in Bruce Rogers, who was uh, a longtime partner of Carl Schieffer, who died recently, and is a ardent Georgian Bayer who has done an enormous amount of work protecting Georgian Bay over, the, over his lifetime. And Bruce has worked with him for 30 years. Um, we have participated in numerous discussions and meetings with uh, TCE and their consultants, ERM. Uh, we came up to Meaford, I came up to Meaford and met uh, with Rob uh, Armstrong, uh, Meaford CAO. Um, we have done quite a bit of research on such things as are there really CO2 savings? Why not put this in a closed loop location rather than an open loop using Georgian Bay waters? and what other technologies might achieve the same objectives. So um, I'd, I'd just like to dwell on the CO2 uh, comments. Uh, we're still in the midst of talking to TC about this. Um, when we looked at the Navigant analysis of this, which is um, short on details about how they make the calculations, it really depends on the assumptions they make about future energy market in Ontario, it seemed to us, based on current information that was available, that this project would actually increase CO2 um, emissions quite substantially. And the reason for that is that we use very little gas in Ontario for uh, creation of electricity. And we, uh, most of the uh, electricity produced in Ontario is uh, nuclear, uh, hydro, and, and there's solar and wind and some gas. Um, but uh, nuclear and uh, hydro dwarf the gas, uh, um, in the, uh, the gas use and, and the and consequent emissions, and there's no emissions from the nuclear and hydro, of course. So very little gas savings are potentially possible right now. Um, clearly, if one uses assumptions which assume that that will increase significantly in the future, that would change. But at the moment, the trend is definitely down. And we believe the trend actually will continue to go down rather than reverse itself. Um, the reason we think the CO2 emissions will go up is that the, uh, the project uh, uses a lot of electricity because it is only 70% efficient. So uh, as a result of that, um, there will be substantive lost exports to three US jurisdictions in particular. Uh, that will no longer be able to import uh, electricity because it will be used by this project. And this is a very sizable project, you have to understand. Uh, so um, th these amounts are significant. Uh, those particular jurisdictions create a lot of their electricity from coal and gas and have very high CO2 emissions right now. It's possible that that will change in the future, but by no means certain. Um, so right now, there would be a substantive increase in CO2 emissions if the project was operating today. Um, as I say, we are still in discussions with Navigant and TCE on this matter. Uh, we, haven't, uh, we, we, we always keep an open mind, so we will continue to do that. But that is our research to date. And it's, this is fundamentally important because it really goes to one of the fundamental, one of the principal justifications of this project was its CO2 savings. And if that is no longer the case, I think we should all have another deep think about what, uh, this project and approving it. Um, in the future, we will continue. Uh, what, one of the things that I don't think has been mentioned much today is that as a result, I believe, of our discussions with them, Save Georgian Bay efforts, uh, MIFID perhaps, and others, um, TC has completely revised the design of their intake and outflow pipe. We are very pleased with this development, provided it is actually carried through and they do uh, complete uh, what they say they're going to do, um, because it will have a very substantive impact on reducing the environmental, the negative environmental impacts from this plant on all the things I mentioned previously. 
So that is an important area, and uh, I'm sure the town understands uh, the uh, significance of that uh, change and will be carefully monitoring progress under it. Uh, we submitted a fairly detailed letter to... Thank you, Mr. Uh, Can you wrap up, sorry. please? Can yes, you I will wrap, wrap up. up. We, uh, we we uh, submitted a fairly detailed letter to the town and the councillors on May 28th, which I hope you've had a chance to read, which basically spells out um, what what we think about this. In the future, we'll continue our liaisons. Um, one final recommendation. I think it is important that the town uh, spend some time with their lawyers, perhaps, and D DOD ensuring that if possible, this project is made subject to the town's official plan and bylaws under the uh, section in the official plan, which covers the jurisdictional nature of the MIFA D&D &D lands. Um, okay. Thank um, you, Mr. So I think that, that would be a good thing to do. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Kindersley? Uh, Councillor Bartley? Yes. Uh... Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A uh, question to the speaker. I didn't get his name. It didn't appear on the screen. But having said, uh, I would like to find out through him or through somebody else. They were going to use wasted power. They're still going to sell power to the states. Wasted power would be when they shut the wind turbines down at night. That's wasted power. That's power we could have to fill this reservoir at no cost. This is my assumption. And then when this plant is up and running, if it is, they were going to shut down a gas fired plant in Ontario. So that would be the difference in the CO2 emissions. If this is not correct, and this is what was explained to me, I need to know this in the future. Thank you. Uh, do you want me to answer that? If you can, yes. So my name is Rupert Kindersley, you were asking my name, and I'm the Executive Director of the Georgian Bay Association. Um, so that covers your first question. Uh, secondly, um, if you have a look at the power use uh, online information available about the power use in Ontario, I think you will see what I mean about the substantive exports. Um, uh, I believe a lot of those exports are done at off-peak times. I would imagine they would have to be because we don't have a lot of surplus power during uh, high-peak uh, times. Um, what exactly will happen in the Ontario energy market is subject to a large number of uncertainties, including what happens if uh, a very dramatic increase of electric car use occurs and everyone tops up their cars at night, uh, which will then be at off-peak rates, may not remain off-peak rates any longer. Um, I think there's a, there's a huge potential for, for major users of power to put in place um, battery power storage uh, facilities, for instance, so that they can top those up at off-peak rates and then discharge them at peak rates. Uh, if that becomes an economic reality, I think that will change things significantly. There, uh, there is a couple of technologies. Uh, one is the Generation 4 nuclear technology that is coming on stream in 2022, um, and also what was originally called artificial photosynthesis. These are two things that um, you know could be complete game changers in the energy space. So I don't know how you can possibly predict the future energy mix in Ontario with any accuracy and come up with any CO2 savings for this project. Thank you. That, Thank you. That, that, that did um, not answer either of my questions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Keveney. Thank you, Your Worship. And thank you, uh, Mr. Kindersley, for your uh, presentation. And I realize that uh, you won't be able to provide an answer on this, but I uh, wonder if, if I might ask your thoughts. Thinking of uh, the current emergency situation with uh, COVID-19 and, and how I feel that's really going to impact uh, the lifestyle of many people. I think a lot of folks now are going to continue to work from home, for example, and as you speak to uh, electric cars and the impact that could have on future energy needs, I'm, I'm su suspecting that uh, studies will be undertaken as well to determine uh, um, the needs for this project and other projects as we look at um, how, as I mentioned, uh, lifestyles are going to change as a, as a result of uh, COVID. 
Thank you for that, Deputy Mayor. And uh, did we have another one? Councilor Bell. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, and uh, I will just refer to you, uh, guest speaker, as Mr. Rupert. You said that, uh, and I didn't write it down uh, accurately, you said that there was 42% of the outflow uh, at Niagara Falls, and I didn't catch the where that was. Okay, the, um, the flow rate um, for this project, both in and out of Georgian Bay, should it go ahead, is equivalent each time that they pump water to 42% of the amount of water that comes over the Canadian side of Niagara Falls. It was just to um, demonstrate the scale of this project and therefore the potential impact it would have on the environment. And that's why we were very concerned initially, and we still are by Thank that. You. Anything further, Council? Uh, Councillor Greenfield? Mr. Kindersley, um, when you were doing your uh, CO2 research, um, did you happen to uh, evaluate at all the amount of emissions that, uh, that would be uh, generated by the heavy equipment, uh, uh, the construction equipment and the haulage equipment that would be necessary uh, while building uh, the reservoir? Uh, we didn't do that, but we did make a comment that there would be an increased C uh, amount of CO2 emission during the construction phase. That is inevitable with any construction project. Thank you. Seeing no further questions for you, Mr. Kendersley, I'll thank you again, and we'll move on to TC Energy presentation. I believe we Thank have two presenters uh, on that, uh, Mr. Clark, Clark Little and John Nicholson. We do. Okay, so over to you, gentlemen. Thank you, Your Worship and counselors. This is Clark speaking. Uh, I believe John is uh, beside me virtually and will be uh, answering questions for you when you get to that stage. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to address you directly and talk to you about this exciting project. Uh, we find the CAA report to be an excellent summary of the challenges, the challenges that are visible now, and, and uh, that's very helpful for us as we move forward. We look forward to getting together with council, staff, uh, residents of the municipality, the county, and, and, and so on to address these challenges you've out outlined and together seek an acceptable and workable solutions to all of them. Before I get into some details, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I just want to give you a fast snapshot. I am second generation living in Meaford. I haven't lived for two generations here, but I'm a second generation guy since the 60s. Uh, in the early years, I most, mostly visited my parents because they moved here in the late 60s. My mother was a businesswoman. She ran the Muffin and Mouse down in the uh, harbor area. Some of you may remember that. And my father was a retired army tank commander who settled here after he retired. But more importantly, he worked, he was named, his nickname was Colonel Bill. More importantly, he worked tirelessly in the 80s and 90s to reopen the Meaford tank range after it sat idle for many, many years. I kind of feel a little uh, serendipity and uh, with all this that I'm now sort of engaged in the same type of project that he is. And that is uh, working around the confines of Meaford Range and, and working with an exciting uh, project like the pump storage facility. I have both feet in, or feet in both camps, uh, knowing the community and loving the environment and also working with Trans Canada Energy uh, to uh, help bring this program forward. I'd like to talk a little bit about the pump storage project itself, and I have three points to make. This is a world-class clean energy project, notwithstanding your former deputant. And uh, it uses cutting edge technology, the absolute most modern technology as planned, and the team is guided by principles of professionalism, integrity, and transparency. 
the clean energy side of that is uh, clean hydropower for at least the life of the program, 50 years. And clean energy means greenhouse gas emissions. I can only work with the best information I have and our studies tell us that there are greenhouse gas uh, savings over the, over the life of the project and certainly uh, realizable almost instantaneously after we net in the construction greenhouse gases. I would like to say that that information needs a third party verification. And that of course is the purpose of the Impact Assessment Act of Canada and the federal departments that will go over our assumptions and the designs and everything else to determine the validity of the information. I would also like to mention as a second point that TransCanada Energy is committed to environmentally responsible projects through community engagement. Perhaps there's no better example of that than what has happened in this particular project since the end of the three community engagement sessions, which uh, ended in January of this year. As a result, and you have been, uh, this has been uh, explained to you or shown to you, the, the, we, we have made a major redesign of the concept, major changes. I'm going to list them here quickly. The powerhouse has been moved off of the shoreline toward the reservoir and will be placed underground. It won't be dug into the ground. There'll be a cavern. It will be built into it. The new inlet outlet design is offshore further in deeper water, comes up from the bottom and utilizes horizontal flow and greatly reduces velocity of the water. The velocity is the key, the key number here. Fish can only fit, swim so fast and the velocity of the output when we're pumping water down or releasing water is uh, theoretically at the point and been modeled is such that fish can get out of the way of it. It's not like Niagara Falls. It may be 40% of the volume, but it, that number did not include consideration for velocity. Thirdly, the connecting in infrastructure underground between the uh, input output uh, uh, nozzles, not the right word, but and the powerhouse is all underground. There is no surface disturbance when that underground infrastructure is put in place. And lastly, the hydro corridor is now considered to be the concept is underwater through Georgian Bay. Uh, and then from there to the closest hookup point near Steiner. Now, all of, those, all of those major changes, which we undertook as a result of public consultation, that's really important, address quality of life, not just to the people who live close to the, who are neighbors of the, of the facility, but also to the critters that live on the land and the fish that live in the water. Here are a few, of the quality of life uh, items. Noise reduction, vibration reduction, dark sky, sight line um, preservation, wildlife preservation, because everything is underground except the reservoir, mostly everything. Water quality, reduced fish entrainment, avoiding fish spawning, uh, shallows, reduction of turbidity from the previous concept, the elimination of shore erosion, the preservation of water quality for the, I mean, the, the military takes their water further north than the first cottager. Uh, they're going to be looking at the water quality that comes off into their water system. The open spaces concept articulated in the Niagara Escarpment philosophy. The beauty Fire of the escarpment, yeah, I'm almost finished. Good. The pres preservation of the forests and the serenity of nearby residential properties, all of that is addressed by those four major design concept changes. That will need to be, those, those claims will need to be verified by the uh, upcoming environmental assessment now referred to as, uh, as uh, uh, the impact 
impact analysis. Econ now here's, I'll, I'll go very quickly through this. There's a Mark, whole bunch- of, We have to move on, wrap up please. A whole, bunch of pro 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 a whole bunch of words in there about economic uh, assessment, uh, economic impacts. We need to work together to figure out what those are and how to work together to, to understand them and work with them. All of it needs to be verified by the Im Impact Assessment Act and we would encourage the council to adopt the report's recommendations and move forward to the Environmental Assessment Act to val validate and verify what I've just told you and everything else that's in behind the project. Thank you and I apologize for going over time. Thank you, Clark, I appreciate your time. Um, are there any questions for uh, TC Energy from council? Seeing none, I think you're getting off easy here. So we will move on. Thank you so much. And uh, we didn't hear from you, Mr. Mickelson, but uh, we appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Um, on to our next speaker then is Nancy Primack. Can you hear me? We can. Good afternoon. Mayor Compass, Deputy Mayor Keaveney, Councillors and staff. We can't hear. Can you speak up, Nancy, please? Uh, yes. Is that better? That is better. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today regarding this extremely important decision for the municipality of Meaford. I am a resident of urban Meaford. I was born in Meaford, grew up here, and returned when I retired 10 years ago. You can't hear me well? No. Um, it, it's coming through very clear, but if you could just speak a, a little louder, that would be great. Okay. I feel like I'm yelling, but I'll, is that better? It could be my That's computer. Better, yeah. Sorry. Okay. I am extremely fortunate that my adult children also chose Meaford as their home. I love it here. We love it here. Will we still be able to say that if TC Energy builds a pump storage plant on our shore? The risks to our shoreline and escarpment community are great and not worth sacrificing for any financial gain. The residents of Meaford are looking to council for leadership on this issue. What kind of environment do we want to leave for our children and our grandchildren? I also have a strong history with the former St. Vincent Township lands expropriated in 1942. Are you hearing me now? We are. Yeah, okay, thanks. I see parallels between the expropriation in 1942 and the pressure by TC Energy today to forever change the face of Meaford. My parents, grandparents, great-grandmother, aunts and uncles were all forced from their homes and tight-knit communities by the expropriation in 1942. My father, John Cowling, spoke of the emotional and financial suffering of the family. The residents were pressured in various ways, including the threat of force. Families were led to believe that the loss would be temporary, orchards would be cared for, buildings protected, schools and churches allowed to stand awaiting when occupancy when the war was over. My grandfather, Hector Kingston, owned over 600 acres, including the entire North Shore of Mountain Lake and 175 acres on Georgian Bay. My great grandmother, Vina Cowling, owned a cottage at Cape Rich. She was told in the fall of 1942 that her land and cottage would not be affected. When she returned in the spring of 1943, her cottage and its contents were looted and bombed. Respect was not shown to the families whose communities were destroyed. If DND claims to still need all of this land, then why are they considered considering leasing some of it to TC Energy? making any of this land that was expropriated in 1942 available to TC Energy or any other company for financial gain is a betrayal to the families 
who were forced to leave their homes on this land. Meaford lost 15 kilometers of shoreline in 1942. Do we now want to endanger the remaining communities of Sunnyside, Kaiwana, and Georgian Beach? Meaford sacrificed once. Please don't ask our community to do so again. I attended two of the three town meetings hosted by TC Energy at the arena. Although TC oh, sorry, although TC Energy acted, uh, although TC Energy was supposed to be holding the meeting to hear from the community, I felt that we were treated without respect. If TC Energy acted in this way before they have the go-ahead for this project, what makes council think that they will be good partners for our community? What will stop TC Energy from taking over more of the DND range property once they get their foot in the door? I see a strong parallel between the expropriation 1942 and the situation now by TC Energy and its ability to also expropriate land for its benefit. As you as a council discuss this project, please ask yourself these questions. What do we want the municipality of Meaford to be known for? How do we see ourselves? Please oppose this project and protect the beautiful shoreline and escarpment community that we are so fortunate to enjoy. Thank you. Appreciate your time and, and your family history for sure. Are there any questions for Nancy from council? Okay. Seeing none, we will move on to our last speaker, Bruce Rogers. Can you hear me okay? We certainly can. I'm on. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mayor Klumpus, council members, members of the community, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. My name is Bruce Rogers. My property is located on Cedar Avenue, and I'm a proud member of Save Georgian Bay. We're here together because we all want the same outcome, to protect the environment and our community. We want future generations to look back and know we made the right decision for the right reason. Good decisions come from sound principles. We've come to learn that TransCanada Energy makes decisions based on one principle, shareholder return. This drives their strategy. They offer trinkets, economic benefit, community housing, whatever it takes to gain alignment. They greenwash the message and repeat it over and over in the hope people will eventually come to believe it. They initially proposed the cheapest possible option and then reacted to the pressures as they arose. They repeatedly tell us that this project is one of the largest climate change initiatives in Canada, yet our research shows this project will cause an increase in carbon rather than a reduction in carbon. They tell us this is truly state-of-the-art design Yet, after being challenged by a small group of concerned community members, they completely redesigned the plant. They then tell us again, this is a truly state-of-the-art design. The redesign lowers the risk to nearshore aquatic life, but it now introduces a new risk to offshore aquatic life. In their own words, we listened. TransCanada Energy believes this is an honorable statement. I see it as proof that TransCanon Energy is not a company to be left unchallenged. TransCanon's primary responsibility should be to protect the public, the community, and the environment. If the community tells them their design will kill fish, then they failed in their primary responsibility because they should have known. They should seek community input on learn, on, to learn constraints and preferences but they should never ask the community to decide between environment and economic gain. Both can be realized. They should never ask whether they should consider the well being of fish, fish habitat, endangered species, air quality, water quality, human health, or the safety of those most affected. These are givens. 
we listened, they say. What would have happened if we had not given a message for them to listen to? What about the messages that they haven't yet chosen to listen to? We still have a 23 million cubic meters of water over our heads and an unknown transmission corridor to contend with. Most importantly, what about the messages that we don't even know yet to ask? U.S. Council members have a decision to make today. I trust you've never made a decision like this before. Few communities have. This is a highly complex, multi-billion dollar industrial facility. You can't draw from experience, so you must draw from principles. I see two. First, U.S. councillors represent the constituents when making decisions. You've heard from many who oppose the project and perhaps a few who support it. The fact is, you don't know for certain what the divide is. Second, the official plan provides guiding wisdom. The document was prepared through a public engagement process to define what type of community we all want. Through this document, your constituents provided a clear message, environment first. This means that protecting the natural heritage shall take precedence over development. These two words, environment first, articulate the principles that guide your decision today. Our ask is that you modify the recommendations presented in the report before you. We ask that you advise the Department of National Defense and TransCanada Energy that the municipality of Meaford oppose the project until such time that all conditions stated in the report are met to the satisfaction of council. We, you, have a voice in the process. Our small group just proved that. Trans Canada Energy says we listen. So give them a strong message to let, listen to. Let them know that Meaford, the environment comes first. Thank you. Mr. Rogers, any uh, questions for uh, Bruce Fund Council? Deputy Mayor Keveny. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, Bruce, for your uh, presentation to us today. You're, uh, I think, first speaker actually to mention the uh, reservoir, and I wonder if you'd expand upon your comments there and share with the uh, council and our listeners a little bit more about what you see as uh, risks and concerns in relation to that 375-acre um, dam and uh, and reservoir. Well, we, we haven't been provided with any details about that reservoir. At one point, we heard that it was completely dug into the escarpment on the tableland, uh, back from the edge. We then hear, no, it's going to be a large concrete uh, retaining structure across the face of the escarpment. Um, we don't know. We haven't been provided with, with details of what that is to look like. The fact of the matter is dams do fail. Um, we've had two fail just recently in the United States. We had a pump storage plant uh, upper reservoir fail within the last six or eight months. So we don't have any information on that reservoir. We don't know what the design of it is to look like. Uh, we don't know whether it's a, a dug reservoir back from the edge of the escarpment or whether it's a concrete dam extending across the face of that escarpment. Um, the fact of the matter is a dam overhead of many families poses a risk to those families. It's not a question of will the dam fail. It's a question of what is the consequences if it does fail. And if it does fail, there will be loss of life. Councillor Kentner. Uh, we can't hear you, Councillor Kentner. You may just need to press your own mute button. It's not working at this end. Push your mute button. Uh, probably in the bottom left of your screen.
If you move your cursor around, it might show. Can I go to the... While you're looking for that, Councillor Kender, I'm going to go to Councillor Vickers for his comments, his questions. Through your worship, uh, you, you said there in your last statement, uh, Mr. Rogers, that there's been a pump water facility fail in the last six to eight months. Could you give us the name of uh, what facility that was and, and whereabouts it's uh, situated? I don't have the name off the top of my head, but we can put it. So you don't know the name of it or the place where it's been or where it's at? Not off the top of my head to answer the question, but I can provide that to you. It's well documented. If you Google it, you'll find it. Like, what would you like me to Google? Uh, failed pump water facilities? Yes. Okay, we'll give her a try. Is there anyone else while we're waiting for Councillor Kentner? Sorry, can you hear me now? We can. Okay. Uh, and, and I apologize. I wasn't asking a question of <clears throat> Mr. Rogers, <clears throat> but I, I am using a, a computer with which I'm not familiar as a result of a problem getting into the meeting, so I, I apologize. Oh, you don't have a question? No, no, I did not signal a question at all. Thank you. I I'll beg your pardon. Later, I thought you had. Okay. Then that uh, brings us to the end of our delegations. And I want to thank everyone for your uh, comments and for sharing your time with us this afternoon. Um, you are welcome to uh, watch the rest of the proceedings on YouTube if you wish. Um, but we will continue on with the agenda. And uh, next up is to hear the presentation from our CAO, uh, Rob Armstrong, on his report. Over to you, Rob. Hey, thanks. So just to clarify, they don't put the report on first for a question for Matt, but... Um, we can do it either way, uh, but yes, if Madam Mayor, Mayor, you'd like to ask for a mover and seconder. Yes. All right. We'll uh, ask for a mover and a seconder to put this on the table. Mover first, Councillor Vickers and uh, Councillor Bill. Great. Thank you, Worship. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take Council through uh, a bit of a, a presentation highlighting the report. I'm not going to go in depth. It's been out there for two weeks uh, for council to review and the public to review and digest. So I'll just highlight some of the key stuff uh, in the report through a bit of a presentation. So moving to slide two under uh, council direction uh, from the coming from the 19 or the November 18th council meeting council directed staff uh, to bring back prior to the March deadline at the time a comprehensive list of matters that the municipality is looking forward to be addressed as part of the formal approval process. In this particular instance, we're referring, we're referring to the environmental assessment process. Two things happened since that time. One is we know the deadline was extended to July 31st, and then also all the restrictions with regard to COVID-19 happened. We had it set to go to the council on the March meeting in advance of the 31st. However, constraints of holding meetings pushed us back a bit. So here we are today to be able to, to present it. Going to the next slide. Um, one of the quick questions we have to ask ourselves is how do staff identify issues? How do we know what issues are important to the municipality? How, um, how do we know what issues do we need to put forward in our submission? And in doing that, one of the key things that we as a professional planner would do is I would look to our official plan because that's really uh, sets the, the vision, the values of the municipality and those matters that we would want to be considered if we had a planning app application within our municipality that we would want to consider. And when we go through that process uh, and is required by the Planning Act of Ontario, applications must have regard for provincial policy statements and other provincial plans. We know uh, there's a lot of stuff about protection of natural heritage within those. We also have a county official plan which must be conformed to and our local official plan. 
We'll focus our comments today on the NEFRD official plan because it has to be consistent with the provincial policy statements and conform with the applicable policies of the county official plan. So it is the one that we can focus on in putting our comments forward. So as it's been stated, uh, section B28 of the official plan um, is a policy as it pertains to the base. And one of the key things that states is as long as the lands proposed for the pump storage facility remain under the jurisdiction of the government of Canada, um, then this official plan would not appear to technically apply to this proposal. But what the municipality and staff believe is that, and as we've heard through some of the discussion today, is that there is the potential, uh, just move to the next slide, um, there is the potential that whatever happens on this base will affect lands outside of the base and within the municipality. And therefore, it is our opinion uh, that the, uh, the affected official plan uh, is applicable uh, insofar as establishing our issues list. And it should be evaluated in accordance with the goals, objectives, and other policies of the official plan. So we've heard uh, discussions as well today about what is the community's vision and that is foremost at the beginning of the official plan. And I've highlighted some of the key statements in this uh, presentation. Um, there's a number of significant environmental and topographical features that really create a sense of place for the municipality and for many of our residents. They include the Georgian Bay shoreline, the Niagara Scarment, boat both of which are applicable to this proposed development. We've got large forest tracks that support both diverse wildlife and plant communities that we need to ensure protection. The protection of these attributes is key underlying principle and, and we've heard it as well, that our official plan has an environmental first philosophy. And what that means is protecting significant natural heritage features and functions take precedent over development. So as we establish our, our, our issues list and going forward, foremost is the environment uh, first principle. So going through some of the key goals and objectives, we've got natural environment and the, the goal of that is to, uh, natural environment is to protect and enhance our natural heritage features, is to ensure when the municipality makes planning decisions that we consider those. It also talks about the rural character to maintain and enhance that and that's through a lot of uh, protecting and enhancing the Georgian Bay shoreline and avoid intrusion of land uses which are incompatible with the rural area. It also includes uh, elements of economic development. We got to also recognize elements of that and it's got to provide op economic opportunities for and the creation of jobs within some of the key goals and objectives of the official plan. So as we analyze, uh, it, we go through the analysis section of the report and identify those issues. Number one is the peer review and a project manager. We've highlighted and we've heard that this is a massive project, a massive undertaking. And it's uh, currently uh, staff would be very challenged to be able to manage and deal with, it, uh, with this project. So we are recommending that a project manager be retained uh, to sort of oversee both the peer review and, and overlooking that project. And that would come from one of our, um, uh, uh, one of our slate of uh, engineering firms that we hire on a regular basis to do uh, look after projects for us on a peer review basis. In addition, we know that there's gonna be a lot of studies that are put forward to us that uh, I would say that municipality does not have staff that are technically capable of reviewing and providing proper advice to council. So just as with any other similar planning application where we receive uh, environmental impact studies and those we farm those out to uh, consultants to provide advice back to us on the findings of those reports. So that would be the other recommendation. And that's what you, you see in recommendation number three at the end. When we get into the issues list, we've highlighted a number of issues and we broke them up into some subtopics. Uh, one of the one is turbidity and water quality. Um, we know that under section C4 of the official plan, resource, water resource management requires studies to address quite a range of criteria that are listed in the report. And we would look to those, uh, the reports to address those same issues with regard to this proposal. Section C11 speaks to the shoreline as a providing habitat for fish, 
fish and other wildlife species. And in keeping with our environmental first approval, we, we believe that those uh, reports should come back and identify that there's no impact to fish habitat with regard to the proposal before us. We know we're having shoreline erosion and coastal impacts with the high water. We would expect those studies that come forward to identify that the resulting impact from any proposal in here would not adversely impact the, uh, the current shoreline uh, of our residents to the south or even into the urban area of Meaford uh, as well. Species at risk, with whenever we get a proposal, we require an impact impact environmental impact study that demonstrates that whatever development is occurring in the land will not endanger any uh, species at risk or uh, other uh, elements, whether it's uh, animals or uh, plants. So those that would be need to be demonstrated. I know they're working on those studies and uh, we would expect to receive and review them or ration study. We've got light and noise as another one, section D925 of our official plan speaks to a dark sky policy that we have to ensure that um, whatever lighting is that would not adversely impact or create problems from, from a dark sky perspective. Noise, um, quite typical with you get industrial development in close proximity to residential development, you look for noise attenuation studies to demonstrate that there will not be impact um, within regard to adjacent residential uh, development. So we would be looking to those type of studies in relation to that. Air quality, um, section D922, um, has the different elements that we look through with regard to air quality. There's a number of elements within our official plan that we would look to. And this is primarily, I would say, in relation to the construction period. Uh, once it's constructed, I don't see too many problems with, with air quality. It's primarily doing construction and protecting in relation to that. The risk analysis section, this goes to the, the concerns that have been expressed with regard to the reservoir itself and that we would be looking for both a risk analysis or, a, or a, um, a dam break analysis to be submitted by qualified individuals on the proposed structure, that how it would be uh, basically safe. And then if something was to happen uh, or there was some sort of breach, how would our residents be protected in that regard? So we'd be looking for those detailed studies um, as part of the, the submission in that regard. Moving over to the next page, we get into a visual impact. Um, we know that the lands do not fall within the Niagara Scarment plan. Um, that was primarily based on the fact that when the plan came forward, they were federal lands and had no jurisdiction. But we know for a fact that the geological feature of the Niagara Scarment, based on mapping that was done when the original Niagara Scarment plan was coming forward, does identify that the, this is uh, the, the main uh, portion of this development that the reservoir would sit on top is the main face of the Niagara Scarpment and would be designated normally natural uh, environment natural. In that regard, there's a number of policies that we need to, uh, we think that should be looked at, including the visual impact analysis that is normally required for development in proximity or on the Niagara Scarpment. So we would like to see that study prepared. Um, interesting with the suggested changes. Um, I think they've got, it's gone a long way to deal with that visual impact, but we still need to see what the proposal is and how that will be uh, looked at with regard to those policies. The hydro corridor, um, there it was, or uh, there is was options. And when this report was written, we now have heard that they're proposing a submersible. And in the report, you said if if we do have a, a bit of a say, with re especially with regard to the visual impact that the submersible line across the bay over and coming out on the other side would be our suggested opportunity. No expropriation of land for a hydro corridor uh, and also the visual impact. So that would be our recommendation. And I think that it, it holds true going forward. Socioeconomic, um, we've just highlighted in the report some of the concerns about jobs. We do have a bit of a labor shortage in this area. and. Um, with the increase of jobs, how would that impact even our existing uh, employment within the municipality? Um, also the housing for those employees that would be living here. So it's something that we would like to look further at. We know that they did a, a study, um, an econo a regional economic study uh, that we would review. 
Um, it doesn't really dive down and look at some of the more local economic impacts, and we would like to have further discussion uh, on the go forward with regard to that. In transportation infrastructure, um, not so much once it's built, but once during the construction period, we have concerns about uh, any impacts on the, the seventh line, the intersection of Highway 26, also Gray County Road 112 coming down to Highway 26 and, and other roads in the area. Quite typically when you get a project uh, submission, you get a traffic impact study. So we would be looking at a similar study in this regard to identify any of the impacts that would be coming forward and what necessary upgrades would be required to, to address those impacts. We've heard about some other considerations that have been put forward. Um, alternate site designs and technology, is this carbon neutral or what are carbon emissions that come from it? And then site decommissioning. Uh, we are at staff interested to hear it. However, these do not fall within the normal mandate or do not or fall with outside our normal uh, business. Uh, energy is not a municipal responsibility and, and those would be put forward to both either the provincial or the federal government to answer those questions. And through the presentations today, we heard that clarified that that would be part of the, the federal consideration of, of economic and, or the environmental impact as well. So coming forward to the municipal position, we feel that um, in making a decision, the Department of National Defense, or maybe it's not the Department of National Defense, maybe it's the federal government, the other agency that we heard about, that they should be the ones that are also considered the issues list and that be satisfied that those issues can be addressed when considering their decision to proceed. We also believe uh, in putting forward that if those, the DND or the federal government believe that those issues can be resolved, then staff would support moving forward to the formal approval process. I want to clarify that the word support in the proposed resolution is not a support for the project at this time. It's support to move to the more detailed process where we can get the studies, where we can receive them, we can review them and formally submit comments under a st statutory legislative process uh, to review that. Under financial impact, um, obviously we, the project manager role and the peer review role does come at a cost. However, TC Energy has confirmed uh, that they will, just like any other developer in the community, uh, cover our cost to do that under a review role. We would need an agreement uh, to deal with that just to confirm a process and the reimbursement of those costs. Typically we get security deposits and it's funded through there and then they're required to top up, which is part of our normal peer review development process. I would also note in discussions with the county, they would typically get involved in peer review studies as well. And they've agreed that they would uh, partner with us on the peer review um, in, in the process. Um, we still need to review the financial impacts, both positive and negative going forward in relation to the economic impact study. And that would be one of the things that on an ongoing basis we would uh, consider in, in that regard. So in wrapping up, um, I've uh, staff, we acknowledge that there's various studies that will be undertaken as part of the EA processes, both federal and provincial. And the purpose of this report was to outline those matters that we wanna see addressed through those processes or in advance of those processes and um, should be considered. And that would be contained within a letter that we would send to the Department of Natural Defense and TC Energy highlighting those issues that we wanna see addressed. So up there is the recommendation that we put forward in the report and I'll just turn that back over to the mayor. Excellent report. I think uh, it's, we've heard um, nothing uh, that is against it, and I think that you've done a good job on uh, bringing all of the issues forward. So thank you for that, and congratulations for all the hard work you've put into that. At this time, uh, we will begin questions of uh, Rob's report from Council, and uh, following that, we will have comments from each of the councillors.
So is, are there any uh, councillors that wish to ask a question of Rob's presentation? Councillor Vickers? Through your worship, uh, Rob, help me understand, uh, you know, it almost seems like we're asking a lot of questions that don't really, uh, aren't applicable to the DND decision. Because really, I think the DNC, DND decision is basically, is it, is it able, is the, uh, is the tank range able to continue its operations with this, uh, with this project on its lands? And, uh, you know, I sometimes feel that we aren't really doing this in quite the right order. You know, we're almost getting to the environmental assessment before we even know whether there's a need for the environmental assessment. So I just wondered, you know, am I thinking the right way uh, on that, Rob? Or, like, is it, are we kind of getting the cart ahead of the horse? Or is, like, you know, you said to uh, include all these things into the letter for the DND, but is the DND really the ones we should be talking to about this? It should be actually the next phase in the environmental assessment. Yes, it, it's through your worship. It, it is more tied to the environmental assessment process, and and the process is a is a lengthy process as well, both federally and provincial, where you file your applications and that. Um, in addition, we heard that it's maybe not the DND that is the one uh, that it's actually another division of the federal government that actually should be considering the environmental elements uh, before they give the final approval for this project to move ahead and give give that lease. So that was the intent of, of really my recommendation is that it's it's whatever level of federal government that needs to, that has the say with regard to the lease of lands. They, they have a duty and a responsibility, in my opinion, with regard to ensuring the environmental elements are dealt with just as much as TC Energy is on the go forward because they will still own the lands and they need to be considerate of that as well. And, and if I could, uh, and that's what uh, Peter Crane kind of uh, insinuated too, was that there was going to, that, you know, once D&D passes their um, assessment on whether the, the lands can coincide with the uh, pump water facility, then it'll be passed on to another level of government. Uh, did he not? I, that's the way I took it anyway. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you for that. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, a question for you, Mr. Armstrong, in relation to the letter. Um, once it's prepared, I'm just wondering what the process is then. Will that come back to Council for our comment uh, before it's sent? Uh, the intent is not. That basically, it's just referring to the stuff that's in the report. So it's highlighting all of the, the issues in the report. It will include Council's resolution, whatever that ends up being. So it's more just an administrative passing it on uh, to that. So no, it doesn't come back to council. Okay. okay. Councillor Bartley. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Rob, it, it is in report in your report about decommissioning. I believe that we should do a big emphasis on decommissioning and there should be money set aside annually for that. Like stated uh, from one of the public, uh, TCE might not be the owner of this in 40 years. It could be some place in Belize that owns it, and there should be money set aside each and every year for decommissioning. I know it's it's early, but I think that should be uh, big in your report. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, through your worship on the decommissioning, obviously that's highlighted in one of the the other issues. Obviously that decommissioning and the the securities to ensure decommissioning would be between uh, the owner of the company, uh, which would be binding on any future owner of that lease, and the, part, and the federal government. So it, it, again, it's not something that we would be party to, but definitely, I said, we're interested in and we would highlight that for sure. Thank you. Okay, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, in the report, Mr. Armstrong, um, the county planning department uh, recommends contingency plans during the construction phases for flood protection, spills, water contamination, et cetera. I'm just wondering um, if it might be a consideration um, to suggest that uh, some written agreements be created with neighboring property owners so that they have some assurance 
that uh, water quality for their shoreline wells, for example, will be uh, looked after if there's any issues during that phase. Um, yeah, through the worship, um, that is something. So we obviously before they even get to construction, we want to see how <laughs> that mm -hmm. they will be affected. And I think that's where we're at right now. Um, I think as we get closer down in the process and, and if they get to go ahead to, to go ahead, we'll be looking for some assurances in that regard with regard to that and possibly other matters of, of non effect. And I think that's uh, something for that we would definitely consider if we have authority to do so, but uh, definitely something to look forward um, if they get the approval to go ahead and just to ensure that what is said will be done. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's, it's through our normal process, we would have a site plan agreement or a development agreement that would in, make those assurances, provide securities to ensure stuff is done. And uh, we'll sort of look to, to see what the mechanism might be available to us um, with regard to the federal government in ensuring that stuff. Thank you. Councillor Kentner. You're mute. Okay. Um, I, I, I disagree with the, the notion that it's still early days uh, and, and this is anything but a normal process. Uh, so this is, we're, we're really between a rock and a hard place here as councillors because, uh, and, and all I'm going to say at this point is we need to be very certain uh, what kind of a motion we pass today so that we don't paint ourselves into a corner where this decision is overdone and you know we sleepwalked through the whole thing thank you sorry say again councillor greenfield your mute button Good. There we go. Um, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I know I'm uh, maybe asking too much, but I, I'm uh, I'm a little uh, in the spirit of fair play. Uh, I think Council should go ahead with the recommendation and ask for further studies, but. Uh, there are just so many items that uh, I have problems with that I'd, I'd like to know more about uh, before we, uh, th this would be a giant step forward for TC Energy. It, it would be uh, uh, a, real, uh, a real benefit uh, for them. Um, I'd like to know for sure about this transmission line. Is it going to be underwater? What I'm hearing, it likely will be, but I'd like to know for, for certain. Uh, the employment aspects, we're talking now uh, maybe a thousand construction jobs. Uh, we don't have a thousand construction people to put into a job. Gray Bruce doesn't. Gray Bruce, you're on Perth doesn't. Where are these people gonna come from? Where are they gonna stay? Where is this housing? Like it, if there's going to be housing, it's going to be kind of a housing deal. I, I want TCE to provide that housing before the job ever starts, let alone halfway down the road. Uh, infrastructure. I want to guarantee that our roads will be rebuilt to a condition as good or better than when this construction started. Uh, Barry, do you have a question? <laughs> Yes, I, I do. I'm sorry. Can we get a little more confirmation in, in, this, uh, in this recommendation than uh, just simply giving TC Energy the green light to go ahead to do more studies? That, to me, that leaves our council in, in, in no man's land. And uh, I'd really like Really like it if our CAO could uh, uh, could help me in this. Can we can we firm up this recommendation to uh, give us some uh, some more uh, 
some more information, some more perhaps promises of, of what's gonna what's gonna come forward. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Harley. Are there any further questions for Rob? Councillor Bell? Oh, thanks, Madam Mayor. Not a question for uh, for Rob. Uh, maybe you're contemplating doing a little bit of a five minute break. Yes. Okay. Break. Pardon? Um, we should ask the CEO to answer Harley's question. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Go so, back then. Yeah. And, and I'll go back to the direction I was given by council to identify issues list that we wanted to see addressed. So all those things that you raised, Harley, we want to see addressed. And, and basically that's what we're telling TC Energy. And that's what we're telling the Department of National Defense and, and what other level of federal government that we want to see answers to before we will consider any support or our conversely objection uh, we're really not taking a position at this time because we want more information. So I totally agree with you, with your comment. And that was how I put the resolution, draft resolution forward is that we need this more information before we're in a position. The actual environmental assessment process, as I mentioned in my report, that's going to provide the legislative opportunity for the municipality to uh, review, comment, uh, participate in that legal process and, and if it be be and that it may come to this and uh, depending if there's an issue that's unresolvable then there's the ability to um, appeal through that environmental assessment process and it's just um, that is our opportunity to so I, I'm going to say that by us just putting our issues forward at this time is the appropriate step at this time as we are in the process and that will closely monitor both through the project manager, uh, through staff review and through other whatever means that we need to satisfy ourselves that our issues can be covered going forward. Thank you, Rob. Councillor Vickers. Thank you, Your Worship. And, and, if, and that's what recommendation number two says, is it not, Rob? Like just so we don't get ourselves, you know, I've heard, uh, you know, Councillor Kentner uh, you know, talk about us getting ourselves painted into a corner that uh, we don't want to be in. I don't, I don't think we are because basically number two says exactly what we're saying is that we're, we're ready to uh, get on to the next process. And that it's not just a, 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 a simple, we support this project right from the start to the end by passing this motion. I think that's an important thing to, for everybody, you know, for my fellow counselors to, to, uh, to focus it on focus on is uh, point number two. Um, so, you know, I, I agree. Like, that's how I read it. I'm not too sure whether, Rob, that's the way you wrote it and whether everybody else agrees to that, so. Yeah, through the worship, that is that is the rationale for, for writing it that way, is that um, identifying the issues, now support us getting the detailed studies to, that we can then have our technical review, the, the uh, review of those um, going forward. Yes, uh, through your worship, I, uh, I I think this should be debated at the very end of our meeting today, but uh, I clearly do not read Clause 2 that way at all. Uh, I feel that uh, uh, Clause 2 is a, is a handoff to a DND to make the decision for us. Uh, if, if they're satisfied that our issues can be uh, satisfied, then we're satisfied too. Uh, that's them making the decision, not us. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'll ask again if there are any further uh, questions for Rob's report from Council. Okay, and seeing none, then we will move into the next segment. Do we need a quick break, Councillor Bell? <laughs> okay, five minutes then, and we'll be right back.
2017. Yeah, Peter Crane told us. Uh, Sorry, folks. Everybody is unmuted. Everybody's unmuted. Over to you. Okay, we're back. And I'm sure, uh, De oh, there you are, Deputy Mayor, back into the fold. All right, at this stage, um, we will now uh, go through all of our uh, councillors um, with their comments and ask them for their comments. We've again um, allowed five minutes to present additional information. And once we've gone through one round of councillor comments, and the second round is necessary. Uh, we will start the first round in alphabetical order and then we will reverse the, uh, the order uh, for the second round. So starting with uh, Councillor Bartley, did you wish to add anything further? Um, thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, I'd like to put my two cents worth in. Uh, I'm gonna start right off with a recommendation number one is to direct staff to submit a letter to the DND highlighting the issues and ask that DND is 100% satisfied with all the conditions can be met. And it has to be 100%. Now our community vision says it all. The municipality has a number of significant environmental and topographical features that contribute to the sense of place. The official plan states an environment first philosophy, which means that protecting significant natural and heritage features takes precedence over development. This says it all. Our goals and strategic objectives that I uh, was part of when we worked on this repeats this in, in depth, um, which can all be seen on page five of the report. So I don't need to go into that deeper. But the main point I'd like to point out is uh, planning decisions are to protect conservation and enhancement of all water and related resources, including groundwater, cold water streams and lakes. Our strategic objectives also state to protect and enhance the natural character of the Georgian Bay shoreline. If these all can't be met 100%, then we have to pull back on this. It is, is it, it is also our goal to provide opportunities for economic development and the creation of jobs. That is also in there. It is imperative, imperative that the postponed uh, proposed dumping uh, pump storage facility not result in any impacts on water quality, both underground and in Georgian Bay. Our plan, our official plan, asks for the protection of the fish in our waters also. 
And this has to be 100%, not 98%, 100%. If moving forward, I strongly believe the hydro corridor should be sub C. Now they've said that's what's gonna happen. I would like to get that in writing. That will eliminate any unsightly power lines and any further land expropriation. Now this is a touchy subject, but many are upset that these lands were expropriated many years ago and should be returned. Believe me, I know the pain felt as my family had lands expropriated from us on the Bruce Peninsula for the park, not too many years ago. I understand this, but families cannot go back to farms and residents on the DND property. It is not conducive to the DND operations. It just can't be. This, this is something, I know there's pain, but we have, to, we have to drop that aside. It just can't happen. Now, the municipality needs a project manager and we need it now. I don't know where you're gonna find a top-notch professional because probably TCE's already got them all hired, but we need the best there is out there and we need it now. I think we're going forward, we should have it. Now, I would also like to demand that the terms and conditions with the Saugeen Ojibwes and any other First Nations be provided immediately. I wanna see what that contract's all about. I do not believe for a minute, and we could argue this all day long, I do not believe for a minute that property values will decrease. They haven't decreased over at the Bruce Nuclear Plant. So I, for right now, I'll leave it off of this. I'd like to thank Rob for his report. I think it was a very good report. I think it's bang on. And I'd like to thank TCE for their, for their first changes they've done to their design. Um, so they've done three changes and I, I like them all if this thing goes forward. So I'm gonna leave it at that and come back for the second round. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Councillor Bell. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you all. Uh, I've been waiting to speak on this matter now for basically a year. Uh, today uh, was the first time quite technically that uh, members of TC Energy have actually addressed council uh, through uh, the uh, Mr. Peter Crane and from uh, Mr. Uh, Clark Little. And the ratepayers, I'm sure, are waiting to hear voices from council. So I'm gonna speak quickly. I've got a lot of things to say and a lot of ground to cover and I gotta get at it. We hold a position that is uh, represents trust to the ratepayers and we are to be fair and we are to be uh, exercising our decisions in good faith. The reason why we have not, I have not spoke earlier is that decision-making requires identifying and isolating situations, and it does take time. I recognize the supreme importance of public in input. I promote public involvement. We as a municipality are to foster activities and proposals for economic, social, and environmental well-being of a municipality. <clears throat> We can see the TC Energy in its handout in the booklet that was available early on in the presentation that the federal government and the provincial government are key players in this. There is no line that represents First Nation, no line for Gray County, no line for the municipality of Meaford. Ottawa and Toronto will ultimately call the shots. You can see that quite clearly for yourselves when it ends with the minister's decision. My solid conclusions are this, that the federal government has an appetite to go ahead with this project, given that they had permission to do preliminary studies, even though it's located on a military training base. Save Georgian Bay has been outstanding. Their comments have been well thought through and well researched. Personally, I'm a conservationist. I fish, I hunt, wildlife, water, air, all of it is important to me. I had opportunity to actually tell TC personnel early on in their discussions out at the Meaford and St. Vincent Community Center, and here it is. Folks, quite honestly, our rear ends have been naked and blowing in the wind. Our ratepayers have been asking me and others as councillors, why don't we speak up on this? Why don't we do something? And basically, TC Energy, because it has been very, very confusing, and to my mind, there are issues that still stay confusing. We need to have more dialogue 
and meaningful dialogue with TC Energy. The only position with any degree of significant strength is to ensure that the environmental impacts and the voice of the people are heard. That is our responsibility. This is a long process. Power lines, roads, water, everything that everyone has talked about, wells, the reservoir, it's all important to me. As a councillor, we are to foster economic, social, and environmental well being of the totality of a municipality. I want to see the pros and cons. I want us to know the information that is still out there to be learned about the reservoir, vibration, silt, fish, everything. Please also know that there is also a voice of people who support this. They can see the big picture. They see the economic benefit. They can see the highly trained engineering jobs. When they talk to me, they always say, but Tony, for God's sakes, make sure you look after the environment. We're counting on you. This is far too important not to do this right. We have to have open dialogue to solve each and every aspect of the questions. TC Energy in their latest uh, pamphlet that I have received and I know fellow councillors have received, have a line that says they wish to have a host community agreement. Actually, who is the true host? Is it the Department of National Defense? Is it the federal government? Is it Gray County or the municipality of Meaford? To say that we could uh, declare ourselves as an unwilling host probably wouldn't be worth the paper and pencil or pen that's used to write it. It would cost us money to fight it. I welcome custom, uh, constructive criticism. Let's not leave any stone unturned. TC Energy has modified and changed its plans. The latest was May the 26th. And in no small part, due to the voice of Save Georgian Bay. This project has the potential to be world-class project, but we must do it right. Beautiful scenery, the perfect place to live. Many questions in this process. The next and the next and even the next council will be affected. I say at this time that I oppose this until we know the full impact and that everything that's inside Mr. Armstrong's report has been met or exceeded. I believe environment and people first. This will have a very long impact on us all. I do believe and I see that TC Energy listens. So let us keep the lines of communication open. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bell. And we go to Councillor Greenfield. If this, uh, if this question uh, was left to uh, municipality me for strategic plan or community vision, um, I, I don't think we'd be going any further. I really don't think uh, it, uh, it, it uh, lives up to a number of the uh, clauses in there. Uh, Councillor Bartley mentioned quite a few of them. I won't repeat them, but uh, um, I really don't think it would fly. However, it's not up to the municipality of Meaford uh, to make this, uh, make this judgment call. I believe in conservation and nature and the environment. I, uh, one of the reasons I've stayed here all my many, many years, um, because I love this area. I uh, love the water, love the hills, love the, uh, love the greenery. I want to preserve that. I want to keep that. Uh, my wife and I have three grandkids and uh, we want to keep that for them. I am, I have a lot of problems yet. And if, if this was a final vote today, I'd be voting no on this project, but I don't see it as the final vote today. I, I'm very disappointed with the fact that this site has been scoped 
this is a one site issue. Why was it scoped? Uh, was it because DND would have the decision making power and not municipality Meaford? Or was it because there's lots of water and a, and a high hill to pump the water up to and a high hill to flow the water down to? I'm not sure, I guess we'll never be sure. As far as uh, land values, I think there will be depreciation of property values uh, in the close proximity of this site. <clears throat> depreciation of property values means lower assessments. Lower assessments means lower revenue lower taxes for the municipality. I'm worried about that. We need every cent we can get. I don't have to, to tell anybody about that. The reservoir does worry me. Uh, I know it's been engineered. I, I know it'll be constructed uh, up to all standards, but uh, I, I was just trying to get an example of how large this reservoir, this lake, whatever you want to call it, is going to be. Uh, for those of us who were around back in 2004 for the international plowing match in St. Vincent Township, the tented village, the parking lot, the trailer parking lot, and all the plowing area was about half the size of this reservoir. It's, it's going to be a lake. I... Uh, worry about the social economic uh, problems. What, what will this project do for the overall mood of our residents, especially those in the immediate area? How will it affect their comfort level, their family and friend relations? How is it going to affect their quality of life in the future? I'm worried about that. And I guess, uh, and it was mentioned earlier before, uh, how does council's opinion on this project, how does it correspond to item 224 clause A of the Interior Municipal Act, which says, it is the role of council to represent the public and to consider the well-being and interests of the municipality. That's one of the most difficult problems I've got here. Are we representing our citizens by giving the go ahead on this project? I guess that's up to us to decide. As I said before, in the spirit of fair play, I will vote today in favor of going forward with this recommendation. I am in no means, no way satisfied that this is the right fit for our beautiful municipality. Let's, let's see how it evolves. Thanks, that's all for now, Your Worship. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. I wanna begin by expressing my appreciation to our CAO, Rob Armstrong, for the countless hours you have invested into your research and the preparation of the report today. It's well done, Rob. This discussion today on the TC Energy proposal is probably the most important of any agenda item ever to come before this council. This is the largest project ever proposed for Meaford. We need to take our time with this. We must be sure our comments to DND are right for this municipality. I wanna thank everyone who prepared and delivered deputations to council today. I appreciate your thoughts and the information that you have provided us. I wanna sincerely thank the Save Georgian Bay organization, Tom, Bruce, Joanne, your neighbors and supporters for your ongoing efforts in raising awareness of the concerns surrounding this proposal. You've been respectful of council, you communicate well and often, and you've educated us on many of the impacts this pump storage facility could bring to our area. Thanks for organizing yesterday's tour. It was meaningful, appreciated, and time really well spent. 
And I do extend my thanks to TC Energy for hosting the three public information sessions, for en engaging this community early and for listening to our concerns. I appreciate the design changes. I'm sure they will add considerable cost to the project. If this project goes forward, it will change the face of Meaford forever. That image is a lot to digest. We know the Council of the Municipality of Meaford has no jurisdiction over the approval process for this proposal, but I do believe we have the opportunity to be significantly influential over decisions going forward. I don't believe acquiring all the necessary approvals will be an easy task for TC. We know there are other proposals in various stages of this process that will be evaluated by the IESO, as well as our provincial and federal governments. Many people, residents of this municipality and beyond, do not want to see this project go forward. However, unless we entertain the recommendations in the report before us today, we may have no say at all, and we may never really know if this project could be good for MEFIT or not. We are being asked to direct staff to prepare a letter to DND highlighting environmental issues and asking that DND be satisfied these concerns will be addressed before granting TC Energy the approval to cont continue with their assessments. I've spoken to dozens of residents and read hundreds of emails. Environmental concerns are common and dominant. People are worried for the fish, our shoreline, water quality in their wells, noise, light and air pollution, endangered species, tree removal, wildlife, and much more. We must be their voice. It's our responsibility to hold TC Energy's feet to the fire when it comes to taking positive action on each and every environmental concern. There is much in our CA's report that speaks to the goals and objectives of our official plan. We must ensure TC Energy meets these requirements on any lands outside the DND zone, on our lands. Through the process of environmental assessments, I look forward to learning the depth of the water table in this area. Will the reservoir, the massive 375 acre reservoir, be built above this table or will it impact the table and what effect will that have on nearby wells? What safety features will be considered for the reservoir? Residents who love this municipality live right below the site for this reservoir. How will they be protected from any potential breaches? How will the tunnels be dug and constructed? What type of chemicals will be used in the digging? And how will neighboring shore wells be protected from any leakage? How will TC address any issues homeowners will face with increased insurance costs? Residents are worried about fish. Will the entrainment velocities be reduced to protect all the species that thrive offshore, including the Cisco? How will the butternut trees, archeological artifacts and burial sites be dealt with? Does TC Energy intend to have enough of their own skin in the game to prevent a huge financial burden falling on the backs of Ontario taxpayers if this project fails? We've heard today that the transmission lines will go subsea and I agree with other members of council. We wanna see that in writing. Until all of the environmental issues are satisfactorily addressed, please know that your deputy mayor remains unwilling to support the proposal in its entirety by TC Energy to construct this pump storage facility. This Meaford girl does not want to see any result here that will negatively impact our vision for the municipality of Meaford, which to remind you is the place to be on Southern Georgian Bay. Thank you. Mayor, and over to you, Mr. Uh, Councillor Kentner. You're still muted, Councillor Kentner. If you want to try again. I don't, uh, there we are, okay. Uh, I would also like to echo uh, my appreciation to Rob and, and your staff for the work you've put into this uh, report. And uh, uh, I also want to thank uh, Save Georgian Bay and some of the other groups and individuals who've uh, done so much to help educate us to uh, all that is uh, at stake here. 
And I also want to thank TCE for the major changes to the plan that they uh, brought forward in the past week. So I've got a number of points here. Uh, first of all, I'm not convinced of the need for this project. Projections of Ontario's hydro needs can be very fluid. And this decade is going to see significant changes and progress in storage technologies. And if we should run short, Quebec has an oversupply. Number two, I'm not convinced of the claimed benefits. It's a big stretch to label this as a green energy project. The construction phase will raise our CO2 emissions and the emissions saved when it starts operating will simply be shifted to neighboring American states and there is no CO2 CO2 border. Most of all, I'm not in favor of turning our back on our own official plan, which puts the environment ahead of development. And unfortunately, I, I believe that this motion at the very least will give a soft endorsement to a project which may be more disruptive than its economic upside is worth. A project that could damage the pristine waters of Nottawasaga Bay, the water that we drink. A project that may yet see high tension power corridor cut through the Big Head and Beaver Valleys, both of which would damage the economic pillar of tourism and reduce property values. And in the worst case scenario of a breach dam, threaten lives and cost millions of dollars in property damage. My problem is with the recommendation of uh, clause two, maybe it's designed to stop the project in its tracks if D&D cannot be satisfied that the issues outlined in Rob's report can be addressed, then we're asking them to say no. I hope it's not designed to simply pass the buck and let the Department of National Defense decide on our behalf that TCE will manage turbidity and water quality, that TCE will preserve fish habitat, that shoreline erosion and coastal impacts won't be an issue going forward, and that no harm will come to species at risk. That light and noise won't be an issue for people living in close proximity to the project and that Meaford's air quality won't suffer over the years of construction. I find every one of these issues far too important to leave it to DND or anyone other than those of us living here to decide. And really, I believe it is our decision as councillors to make it clear that we, we have this feeling. I know my position uh, isn't going to be popular with some members of council and many people who see this as Meaford's one chance to make it big, but I cannot support clause two here. In, in my view, we wasted a lot of precious time. TCE has given the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation an undertaking not to proceed without their sanction, and I believe that the people of the municipality of Meaford deserve similar consideration. So I just summarize that we need to refine the motion that is before us tonight so that we are not passing the buck. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Vickers. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'd just like to start off by saying uh, the amount of information that's been passed uh, through to council, not only by Rob, our, our CEO, uh, TCE, but all the all the people in the public and uh, and save the Georgian Bay, and that's what gives me a little bit of concern about some of the information that has been coming forward. Uh, TCE is uh, cannot say anything that they cannot back up with a third party uh, um, audit. Uh, I would uh, propose that maybe we should have more of this with some of the people giving us the information that they are uh, even today. Uh, Bruce Rogers told us that there was a, a, a pump water facility uh, breach and it happened in the last eight months. There was no mention of a name. I tried to Google it onto uh, my, uh, on my iPad and I couldn't. So one thing I'd like to say is I would like to see Save the Georgian Bay come forward with a third party audit on some of the state, on any statement they want to say uh, I don't think it's right that one side, TCE, has to uh, verify every comment they make, while the other side can just uh, can say whatever they want and never have to worry about backing it up. I think this is an important issue that, uh, that we're getting a lot of misrepresentation, a lot of misinformation. 
uh, being told to us that can't be backed up by science. Because by rights, this is what it's all about. It's about science. It's not about as much as people want to be about passion and about what their, uh, what their family has done and what their family wants to do. It has to be based on science. If this project is needed and can perform the way it's supposed to, then we should be willing to let science dictate that. The emotion that we feel, feel in our hearts isn't always the best, uh, best um, way to, to go about deciding on what projects should be completed and shouldn't be. This project to me is a lot about jobs. Uh, I, I believe in the environment just as much as anybody else, and I'm not willing to see it be sacrificed. Sacrifice. But the other part is about jobs. Over the years, I've heard time and time again how the municipality of Meaford has, uh, has shut down an opportunity to bring jobs into the area. Some people say 20 jobs isn't that many because that's what's supposed to be the final count on the amount of people uh, that will be hired to look after this project. Well, 20 people would be the biggest influx of jobs from one project into this municipality. Forget the other jobs of building it. The 20 jobs that we could get out of this is the biggest employer improvement that we've ever seen in this area. These 800 jobs that we talk about just being uh, you know, one-offs for four years. I know there's a, I like to tell a story and, uh, and there was a, a, a friend of mine that got a job over at the Owen Sound Hospital when it was being built. By doing that job and, and working over there, he was able to afford his first farm. And I think that's important to remember. The young people don't have a lot going for them in this, in this community, unless it's going to be service type jobs. These are well-paying jobs. And uh, I don't think that should be underestimated. And I don't think people should just look at that as being not essential to our decisions. Young people need something to come to to this area. Even if it is only for four years, that is four years longer than they would maybe have if, there, if this project isn't here. Um, another part that I, I think is important and I would like to know more about is the tax assessment. You know, is the municipality going to be uh, financially re rewarded for this project to be here? And I'm not saying we should sacrifice the environment, we should sacrifice the fish or anything else, but we need to understand how this, uh, this project could benefit the municipality of Meaford and the county of Gray. You know, there, there's a lot of tax dollars that could be uh, generated. And I think it's important that we keep that in, in some consideration. We just can't say it doesn't matter. If, if some people aren't happy, then we shouldn't do it. Rob, your, uh, your, your report was well done. I appreciate it. And the thing I appreciate more is you keeping us as a council on track to understand the process, because I think that's been the most, uh, the thing that I've learned the most about this is the process that we're going through here right now. Um, I feel it. we're in the very early stages of the process and we have a lot of time and the assessments and the environmental assessments will come afterwards. We need to keep the horse ahead of the cart. Let's not start uh, saying that we can't, we have to shut it down now because the assessment, the environmental assessment isn't going to work. D&D will do their part and then we will have the opportunity to then go on to the assessment uh, stage of the project. Um, these are, you know, these, these are what I'm basing my decisions on. And uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, are for it that almost feel ashamed and, uh, and are too nervous to speak up against because they know they'll be ridiculed by some of the people that are, that are against the, uh, the, uh, the project. So, uh, you know, I don't think it's quite as easy as what, uh, what some people make it out to be. This petition that's going around with 26,000 names on it, I'd like to see it be verified. Not all these people live in our area. Not all these people are, uh, are know as much about this project as what probably we do. So uh, um, there's much to be learned. This is only the beginning stages of the project. And, uh, and I think we should keep uh, continuing down this, uh, this road. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Vickers. Um, I, uh, before I have a chance, I just want to ask if, uh, if we need another round of uh, Councillor's um, uh, comments following this. 
do we have more to say? <laughs> no, we're good. Okay, Councillor Bartley and Councillor Greenfield will. Okay, all right, then um, perhaps I will save mine and we'll go back to uh, Councillor Bartley then. Oh, sorry, I was gonna reverse order. Councillor Greenfield. It's not okay, Your Worship, if, uh, if you're sure you don't want to get in here. Um, oh, I will. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, I, I just maybe shouldn't make this comment, but I'm going to. Um, I have been somewhat disappointed with the with the DND uh, during this process. Um, again, since the uh, the base was taken back in 1942, it has been used for training purposes for uh, our armed forces, our reservists, and. Uh, other uh, other first responders and and for uh, military uh, individuals from other countries and and I think that's wonderful. It seems almost overnight that uh, the DND has decided that you know maybe maybe we'll go in a different direction, and and that's reasonable. It's 2020. Things change. Uh, don't need to tell you how things have changed the last three months. I, I was really disappointed today when Mr. Crane uh, told me that the DND had been approached back in 2017 about this, uh, uh, about this proposal. That's three years ago. I heard about it just about a year ago. I think most of our council members did too. And uh, I would have appreciated in my personal feeling that if as a member of council, I had got some kind uh, of a rumor even that uh, something might be going on uh, up at the base. I uh, have had both, both my paternal and maternal relatives uh, displaced uh, back in 1942, but that is past history. We have to move forward. I appreciate uh, what Councillor Vickers has said. This, this could end up being a good thing for our municipality. But we've got a lot of work to do, a lot of responsibilities to cover before uh, any decision is made on this project. Today, we're being asked for another step. I see it as a step forward for TC Energy, but we need more information. I need more information. I need more answers and, and not just speculation, but I need answers. And hopefully with these further studies, those firm answers will come to us, come to council, come to our residents, and uh, then we will be better prepared to take that final vote. Thanks, Your Worship. Bartley? Just a second. Pardon me? You were muted. I was muted. Councillor Bartley? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and to Councillor Vickers, thank you very much. It took, takes a lot of guts to stand up against the masses and say that a lot of what you said I agree with but uh, doesn't give your permission or my permission to move forward on this. It's just, we need the facts. Uh, so thank you, Paul. Now, if you remember, I was the counselor that brought forward the climate change motion for the municipality. Contrary to uh, some beliefs, I truly believe that once operating, it will be negative carbon producer and the third party uh, uh, process will tell me whether I'm right or wrong. So we have to wait for that. Like compared to the gas generation that the hydro is being done now. Now I want to put a huge thank you out to the Save the Georgian Bay group. At times uh, conversations got heated, but I, I did not view these as disrespectful. I, I, I viewed them as passion, pure passion. And uh, I thank you for that. And I believe without the groups, participation, TCE would not have changed any of their plans. 
I believe that the Georgian Bay Group has, uh, if this goes forward, has changed this all for the good. Um, I expect and look forward to any and all emails that uh, you want to give me and thoughts. Uh, just an FYI, I have received many comments in favor of this project. It doesn't sway my mind in favor. Of I have an issue with a caller saying we have kept this a secret. From the day I heard about this, I've told every friend that I have, anybody I talk to has heard what I knew at the time. I, I, I take, uh, I, I have an issue with the calling this down that we kept it in secret. Now, as a counselor, I have taken the time and I need more time to get all my questions answered. As a counselor, the public should require me to have all the facts before I make a decision. And that's what I'm going for. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Mr. Bartley. So at this time then, um, I guess I'll try and <laughs> summarize what my, my thoughts are. Um, first and foremost, thank you to all of you councillors. Your comments have been relevant. They've been well thought out. They've been pertinent to the discussion, uh, certainly heartfelt and uh, a lot of, of research and a lot of commitment has gone into all of your, your comments as well as the information that we have heard today from all of our debutants. So it has been quite a remarkable day in terms of information exchange and uh, a respectful dialogue. So thank you all for that. It's, it's really been very, very informative. Um, uh, mention of uh, Save Georgian Bay and the work that they have done, the research that they've done, and uh, the, looking at uh, uh, opportunities for TC Energy to um, redesign their, their uh, concept was remarkable. And that the company itself took that advantage and took that opportunity to do it is really a testament, I think, to uh, the commitment that they're making to um, look at the project from all sides and to um, be a uh, compatible uh, process going forward. Um, thanking uh, our CAO Rob for pulling this report together, referencing our official plan as well as our strategic priorities and our stated values of environmental stewardship and protection. This has really been a tremendous effort all the way around. You know, the report is excellent, it's comprehensive. Um, the intent and the priorities in the report are clear. It's just uh, been a very substantial uh, project going forward and uh, very, very impressive. This report recommends that we support moving on to the environmental assessment to gather more information. And in fact, our questions, um, uh, most of the, them environmental in nature, cannot be answered and addressed except through a thorough environmental assessment. And it is not until after that time that a discussion should be considered on a definitive position one way or the other, either supporting the project further or declining. These questions are extremely important to our, our residents, to us in terms of making a decision, and to our future. We are the stewards of our environment, and it is incumbent on us to make sure that all of our issues, all of our questions are addressed. Mr. Crane from the Department of National Defense has indicated that their issue at this time is whether this project can coexist with the core function of the base, which is the training of military personnel. But I have discovered that through the Defense Energy and Environment Strategy, or DEES for short, they do have a responsibility for environmental stewardship. So should DND determine that this project could coexist with their core function here, then another department, uh, a federal department associated with Environment Canada will likely have more involvement with the environment assessment process. Uh, so it won't necessarily be Mr. Crane and, and, uh, and his team. But the important thing is that it states 
in their manifest that they do have a role and a responsibility for environmental stewardship. And I think this is an important part, a uh, point for us. We must get the answers to our concerns regarding the environment. They all depend on the environmental assessments and our peer review of them. Uh, with this in mind, I fully support the intent of the recommendations presented in Rob's report. But I've heard a lot about the, the language and about the uh, commitment that we need to exact going forward. And uh, so I do have uh, a suggestion to make for an amendment to um, the um, recommendations going forward uh, that might pre present a little stronger language uh, that might be um, of interest to the, uh, that that we've heard today. I'm suggesting that minor wording changes to the recommendations might make our position a little clearer. So with that, Matt, I'll ask you to uh, put up a suggested amendment, if you can find it. Uh, hopefully it is on the way to everybody's screens right now. So basically the amendment um, would suggest that the wording is pretty much the same, direct staff to submit a letter to the Department of National Defense and TC Energy highlighting the issues identified in report CAO 2020-03 and requesting that the Department of National Defense confirm that the issues identified will be addressed by DND or other applicable federal regulator, uh, regulatory body prior to granting approval to proceed with the project. Uh, 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 number two was declares their support for the proposed TC Energy project proceeding to the applicable environmental assessment approvals process, provided that the Department of National Defense confirms that the issues will be addressed and they grant approval to TC Energy to proceed. And then number three is the same, direct staff to retain a project manager to coordinate the peer review of studies and to negotiate an agreement with TC Energy with regard to compensation of municipal costs. If this is something that you would like to discuss, entertain um, uh, and explore further, um, I would entertain a mover and a seconder to put this amendment on the table for discussion. Uh, Councillor Kentner and Councillor Bartley, Your Worship. Okay. Uh, for those watching at home, I will have to interpret because the mayor can only see the motion right now, whereas I can still see councillors' <laughs> photos. Kentner and... Uh, Councillor Bartley. Okay. All right. There's been a mover and a seconder for, for this um, amendment to the recommendations. Is there any discussion? I've got it on mine. Can I see the... Uh... Uh, if, um... I'd like to ask Council whether they'd be okay with the motion coming down so the Mayor can see photos, or oh. would you prefer that it stays on the screen? If they can't see it, I've got, we'll have to tell them um, who wants to Councillor Kentler would like to speak. Okay, Councillor Kentler. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. We can. Okay. There you are. I can see you too. <laughs> Whoops. Well, I, I just, uh, through your worship, I greatly appreciate uh, your initiative in, uh, in uh, uh, suggesting an amendment. And uh, I, I actually uh, uh, drafted an amendment too, uh, which actually brings it down to just two paragraphs. And I could send it to you, Matt, if you're interested. But uh, it, it basically uh, is... is uh, the first paragraph is uh, direct staff to submit a letter to the Department of National Defense and TC Energy highlighting the issues identified in report CAO 2020-03 and request that the Department of National Defense ensure that the municipality's issues are resolved to council satisfaction prior to proceeding to the applicable environmental assessment process provided the Department of National Defense determines that it wishes to host TC Energy's project. And paragraph two is your paragraph three. That's, you know, may, maybe uh, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that what we do today 
that that we can come back and have further discussions. And I'm not sure that the the motion, the original motion anyway, would give us that assurance. Matt, do you have a comment? I do, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so process wise, uh, we now have the mayor's motion on the table, but uh, if anybody else has motions that they may propose, I would certainly love to see them so that I can share them with, with both council and the public, um, but we need to deal with this one first. I will just make the one comment though that the Department of National Defense cannot address all of the municipal issues without going through the environmental assessment process. That is how those issues get addressed. So uh, if, if I may, uh, through your worship, uh, Matt, uh, do, do we get an opportunity to come back and discuss this further? Because I'm not as clear on how that happens. Um, through your worship, I will look to the CAO or possibly even to our Director of Infrastructure Services, who's a, an expert in environmental assessments, to, to tell us how that process would work. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> I was trying to unmute myself, but you had me muted. So yeah, it's the environmental assessment process is the process, as I mentioned in the report, where we get a formal opportunity and it's a legislated opportunity where the reports will be provided to us. We'll be providing formal comments to our peer reviewers, the experts on the review of those. Reports will come to council with regard to those. So council will be informed by professionals with regard to those. Um, we're providing formal comments and then there's also the opportunity um, and I'm, if, if Tori would like to speak further on just how that works it's uh, uh, you can challenge decisions if you don't agree with them through that environmental assessment process if you uh, so there will be lots of opportunity for council um, and that is the key process that provides us the opportunity to engage uh, more in a better way in this process. Do we have somebody else, another speaker? Uh, Councillor Vickers. <clears throat> Councillor Vickers? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so uh, first of all, I, I wish uh, Your Worship that maybe this could have been sent to us beforehand. Obviously, you, you knew your, uh, your um, amendment that you're going to put forward. So now we're, here we are. I have to look at the amendment, but I also can't see anybody else talking, which even in this day of virtual uh, or of uh, Zoom, Zoom meetings, it, it makes it even harder. But I, I Besides that, I'd like to make a couple of comments on, on some of the wording. Okay. Uh, so in, in number one, uh, it's identify, uh, okay, so let's go. Requesting that the Department of National Defense confirm that the issues identified will be addressed by DND or other applicable federal regu regulatory body right. prior to granting approval to proceed with the project. When, uh, when that when Peter Kane Crane was talking and they he talked about the final approval would be done under some water type act. Matt, can you help me out with uh, does any, or anybody else can help me out because they said it's really not the the federal government it's an agency of the federal government and they talked about the the water sort of a thing. Is anybody following what I'm? Anybody else remember what uh, what Peter had said? Because he uh, talked about those words before. I, I do, Councillor Vickers, to a certain extent. Um, it's talking about what's called the Impact Assessment Act. And I do believe there's a federal agency that governs that process to avoid any sense of um, bias if the department themselves were dealing with it. Right, and, and do you remember what the title was, Matt? The Impact, Impact Assessment Act. No, and, and okay, that's not the word I was looking for. 
it uh, it talked about the water taking uh, crown or something like that would be the actual um, final approval of this project. Hmm. Um, there are regulations about taking of water from from any um, lake within the within Canada. Uh, the municipality has to get that in order for our wastewater treatment plant to to operate. And so this process will be the same in that we'd have to have approval from the federal environment agencies in order to take water. But I don't remember the specific legislation for that. They, they talked about the Dominion or something like that. I just thought if, if we should really have prior to the granting approval, and it should be the, the last person that has approval of this project. So, you know, they have to address our concerns prior to the final person. And, it, and there was a fancy title that, uh, that uh, Peter talked about. And I wish I had wrote it down, but I didn't. Okay, thanks for that. Just wait, no, no, just wait. Uh, I, Rob has just put it up. Approval is given under the Dominion Water Power Act. And would that be a stronger wording? So prior to granting approval, and now it's gone off my screen again, maybe it's under the chat. I would like to see that uh, those words included. Prior to grant it, okay, uh, granting Prior approval. Prior is a given by, yes, by the, under the Dominion Water Power Act. That way there isn't any confusion of, uh, of who has the final say. And then if, if you go down into number two, so I, I like your idea about D and D or other or any other applicable federal regulatory body. But if you go down into number two and you get halfway through it, uh, proceeding to the applicable environmental assessment approval process, provided that the Department of National Defense confirms, I would like to see the National Department of National Defense or any other applicable federal regulatory body confirms that the issues will be addressed and grants approved to the TC Energy uh, to proceeding. I just want number two to more reflect what number one was trying to get at. Okay. And if, I don't know whether I have to make an amendment to the amendment. That's right. exactly what, what you have to do. But then you've, uh, okay, so you'll move that, uh, that amendment to the amendment. Is there a seconder for that one? It just just before Matt hasn't changed uh, prior to the granting approval by the Dominican Water Dominion Water Act. No, what is it? Yep. A Dominion Water Power Act is the yeah. word I would like there. Okay. Hopefully, you can now see that as well. Yes. Yeah, and if somebody would like to second that, then uh, that those are my. We have a seconder for that amendment to the amendment. Uh, Councillor Bartley will second the amendment to the amendment. Okay. Uh, we'll call the question. Uh, I think there's some comments first. First, so, Madam Mayor, I think Councillor Kentner has a comment. Okay. Councillor Kentner. It keeps telling us that the host is going to unmute us, but he never does. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I, I wonder, uh, I, I'm concerned about uh, the portion of uh, clause two that uh, uh, declares our support for the proposal because I didn't hear the majority of uh, councillors uh, declare their support until they get these answers. And uh, I just wonder, I, as I say, I, I managed to uh, get rid of clause two altogether in the draft I did, but I'm more than happy to work with this one. And I'm just wondering uh, if we can uh, avoid this, uh, what I, I call, a, it's not, in fact, it's a fairly loud endorsement. And I think that until we get some of these answers, for example, you know, is it is it a, you know, undersea route or is it, you know, uh, uh, is, is it, um, expropriating property all through the Big Head and Beaver Valleys. That's a huge, huge issue for those of us living in this part of the world. 
Councillor Kentner, if I may, uh, the beginning of that uh, clause two is declaring their support for the proposed TC Energy project proceeding to the applicable environment assessment approvals process. That's all the approval is there for okay, just, I, just I, going to the environmental assessment approvals process. Okay, I, I hope that uh, everybody reads it the way you are. Well, that's how I intended it. <laughs> if, if, uh, if it doesn't sound right, let's, let's uh, change it. It sounds right. Councillor Bell, let's. Councillor Bell. Thanks, Madam Mayor. And, and the, the whole issue with this is that it is located on the 4th Canadian Division training property. That's the real fly in this ointment for me. So when we ask by doing this that we're directing them to satisfy what is being proposed by TC Energy, I have to say this, what design? Like, it's been changed on the 26th. I believe it's been changed for the better. But when they go to look at this, what is it that TC Energy will really be presenting? Um, if they've changed it on the 26th of May, they can change it as they even heard conversations from today's meeting. So I am just in the position that I really want to make sure that the municipality of Meaford and the council of the municipality of Meaford, we are the ones that want to have the answers to all of the deals that are being made and the conversations that are being had so that the environment is protected and that the people can feel reassured when we get these answers. Right now, I am feeling that there's more questions than answers. I'm sorry, Tori, yeah. We, uh, Tori uh, has a, a comment to make. Tori, over to you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, sorry, I, I tried to make a comment earlier, but um, was unable to unmute myself. And so I think um, hopefully Councillor Bell, uh, I can also answer your question. Um, I have been involved in many municipal class environmental assessments, um, but they follow a similar process as the environmental or the same process essentially um, as they're both environmental assessments. Um, the intention of an environmental assessment is to um, review a project prior to preliminary or detailed design proceeding. So the reason why um, you may feel that you do not understand what they're intending to do is because they also don't necessarily know what they're intending to do. The environmental assessment process is intended to guide the direction of the project and identify scenarios or options that are not viable because of different environmental issues. And those are so like not just natural environment, but also uh, issues that impact uh, social, uh, cultural, heritage and economic um, portions of the project. So the environmental assessment goes through looking, uh, identifying different options, um, sometimes shortlists those options and then evaluates them to identify the preferred option um, from an environmental uh, perspective. Um, so uh, council will have an opportunity or should have an opportunity to um, provide more input throughout the process. The purpose of an environmental assessment is to have significant input from public and agencies. In this case, the municipality should be considered an agency that will be getting information and also have an opportunity to, um, to provide input. And at the end of the day, if the municipality doesn't feel that they've been provided with the information that they've asked for, or that there's still issues that are un not addressed, um, they have the ability to put forward a part two order on the project, um, in which case the uh, provincial or federal government um, then reviews to determine if the proponent of the project has um, provided the information necessary or not. Um, and then may cause additional um, work to have to be completed before it can proceed. Um, so that's where this project is. And unfortunately, that's why it feels like um, you don't know where TC Energy is going with the project is because this process actually helps develop um, that direction. So hopefully that provides a little bit more information. 
Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Tori. Um, so we have uh, Councillor Bartley. Our Councillor Bartley is next. Uh, thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, two things here. We, we're asking D&D &D to uh, do some things for us. This change to the texting here is that they're going to confirm that they're going to do it. Now, what Councillor uh, Kentner is worried about, and I agree with them, number two, the last five words, to TC Energy to proceed. It should be to TC Energy to proceed with an environmental assessment. What, what Ross is uh, hung up on, and I am too, is the last five words is saying TC Energy to proceed. It, you need to end it with environmental assessment, I think. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Barley. I think that's valuable input. Um, we cannot amend an amended amendment. Um, <laughs> so we would need to deal with the text in red first, then we can propose that as well. Do you, un do you understand where I'm go coming from there, Matt? Yep. Yeah. Yes. So we have a mover and a seconder for the text in red, the amended. Uh, Councillor Vickers would like to say something. Before we uh, take the vote. Okay. Councillor Vickers, you are referring to the amendment as in red. Are you speaking to that amendment? Yes. Okay. Please go ahead. You're currently muted, Councillor Vickers. No, it's gone. Okay. So the, the comments that, uh, that Steve just made uh, on those last five words, I, can I change it as a friendly amendment? You absolutely can. If you're happy as the mover of the motion, we can certainly do that. I would like to do that then, please. And that's in red. Good. Thank you, Councillor Vickers. And is that all right with the seconder? We Councillor Bartley is nodding his Council head. Councillor Bartley is the seconder. Okay. So is there any further comment on the amended amendment? <laughs> all that in red. No further comments. No further yeah. comment. Then I will call the question all in favor of the that amendment. I can't see. Uh, there are six hands in favor. And plus that, yourself, Madam Mayor. Okay. Then that, uh, then that motion is carried. So we'll put that in black. If we'll bear with me for a moment, folks. Okay. So. Um, now we're finished with uh, Councillor Bartley for the moment. And we go to Councillor Greenfield. Hello, um, you, you are all good. All right, thank you, uh, Matt. Um, the only thing that um, the only word that I was questioning was in number one, and that is the word uh, requesting. And I, I'm just wondering if, is that a strong enough word? Uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe demanding might be a little, uh, um, a little too much, but uh, would stipulating, I, I just requesting seems to be okay, we're asking for it, but we're not really guaranteed we're going to get what we're asking for. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm not interpreting the word correctly. I, I just don't think it's quite strong enough. Okay, uh, the clerk has a comment here. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Greenfield, I think it's a, a good comment. I suspect the issue here is um, about what we can do to a federal government department. Um, we, we certainly can't require, uh, we certainly can't demand, um, so I'm very much open to a different word, but it would have to be something that's physically within our capabilities. 
Okay. About uh, a thesaurus here. Entreating, inviting, wishing, bidding, ask for, apply for. There is nothing stronger um, in the thesaurus for that, Carly. I'm seeing no other comments. No other comments. Um, Your Worship. Okay. Oh, Deputy Mayor Keaveney. Okay. Deputy Mayor Keaveney. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, my issue, and Tori touched on it, really uh, revolves around uh, number one, where uh, we speak to highlighting the issues identified in the report and recognizing as time goes by that uh, other issues may arise and how we can uh, reference that in language here because we know that assuming that things go forward that that may have huge impacts on um, properties surrounding the project which uh, then falls into uh, lands owned by the municipality of Meaford. And we know that uh, there may have to be some simultaneous consideration given to anything that's happening around the periphery of, uh, of the uh, area TC Energy would be uh, engaged with. So I'm just wondering if we need a word or some language there that suggests that there may be other um, other areas that need uh, some assessment as time goes by. Over to the clerk for comment. Um, uh, we're, we're playing with wording to a certain extent and, and that's why I'll leap in though. I know my colleagues will, will offer their opinions as well if they need to. My personal opinion is that making this any more complicated wouldn't be of benefit at the moment because again, all this is doing is talking about the deadline that we have coming up in July to make comments so that the DND can decide whether we move to the environmental assessment process. The other issues that, that you're describing, Deputy Mayor, will come up during that environmental assessment process. And so we will have many opportunities to, to engage in that process and raise those issues at the time. I think this is uh, the first of many uh, discussions that we will have as um, issues identify themselves and as we develop if this, uh, if this proposal goes forward, um, that we will be looking at next steps and how do we, how do we tackle this uh, uh, significant um, event, potential event in, in our world. So um, this is just a start to get that um, environmental assessment underway um, so that uh, we'll provide some of the answers we're looking for. I see Anything no further? No, no other request to speak, Your Worship. All right, this motion then has been moved and seconded and I will call the question, are all in favor of accepting this recommend this uh, amended recommendation and I can uh, I see uh, six hands plus yourself yes that makes seven that makes seven so Unanimous. this becomes the the official motion that is now on the floor um, okay in its entirety and uh, do we need to read it again just for for uh, um, concern here uh, yeah, we certainly can, Madam Mayor. Um, so the, the motion on the floor at the moment says the Council of the Municipality of Meaford, um, one, direct staff to submit a letter to the Department of National Defence and TC Energy, highlighting the issues identified in report CAO 2020-03, and requesting that the Department of National Defence confirm that the issues identified will be addressed by DND or other applicable federal regulatory body prior to granting of approval by the Dominion Water Power Act to proceed with the project. Two, declares their support for the proposed TC Energy project proceeding to the applicable environmental assessment approvals process, provided that the Department of National Defense or other applicable federal regulatory body confirms that the issues will be addressed 
and grants approval to TC Energy to proceed with the applicable environmental assessment approvals process. And three, direct staff to retain a project manager to coordinate the peer review of studies and to negotiate an agreement with TC Energy with regard to compensation of municipal costs. Any further discussion on the full motion here? You can, uh, I, I'm going to stop sharing so that the mayor and you all can okay. see each other again. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll ask the question again since I can now see you all. Uh, are there any further comments on this, uh, uh, the full um, motion as put forward? And seeing none, I'll call the question all in favor. And any against? No, we're done. Thank you so much. That uh, uh, carried. Councillor Kentner. Uh, through your worship, I just a, a point of information for uh, Councillor Vickers. Uh, I'm just looking at tonight's news, and uh, it reads that the uh, <laughs> keeps changing its position that the uh, failure of the Edenville Dam and the Sanford Dam in Michigan late Tuesday has brought record setting flooding to nearby communities as thousands of residents evacuate their homes. Governor Gretchen Whitmer issued an emergency declaration for the state and warned that downtown Midland could be under approximately nine feet of water on Wednesday. More than 10,000 people have been evacuated and response teams are screening people arriving at evacuation shelters for the coronavirus. Thank you. Councillor Bell. Uh, Mayor, uh, when I uh, did my uh, uh, you know, talk there uh, earlier on, um, I felt a little rushed for time and uh, I do want to express at this time uh, my gratitude to uh, Rob and his team. Um, other councillors have done that. I did not want our CAO to think that a particular councillor, being myself, didn't appreciate <laughs> that work and uh, putting this together and uh, that uh, this would have come before us earlier. But as we know, COVID-19 has got in the way. But uh, I just want to express that to you, Rob. I do, I do appreciate the work you put into it and uh, and pulling it together and bringing forward uh, issues that most truly need to be addressed. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bell and Councillor Vickers and then Deputy Mayor. Councillor Vickers. Oh, we can't. Thank you, Your Worship. So just to clarify what I said, and you know, and I'll have to go back to the feed to make sure what I thought I heard is what uh, what Mr. Rogers said. But he made, he insinuated what I thought I heard was that a pump water facility failed in the last eight months. I agree, there has been dams fail, but dams are different than pump water facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, just to go on record, that is what I meant when I made my comments that I could not find a failure of a pump water facility uh, failing in the last eight months. Okay, thank you for that. And Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we've heard some comments today in relation to, I believe it was Councillor Bell, um, increased communication with TC Energy. And I'm wondering if we can look at some sort of a plan to um, undertake more regular communication uh, with that company. Uh, we recognized we had the three meetings, uh, December and January, and then we didn't really hear from them again until uh, last week. So I, I, and maybe, I don't know if other councillors agree, but would like to hear from them more often as they proceed through this assessment uh, process and as changes to the plan are made. And I'm, I'm just wondering if we can set up, uh, whether it's a regular schedule or some sort of understanding of uh, how and how often we may hear from them. Something that we will be looking at next steps, uh, Deputy Mayor, and I think uh, um, we'll leave it at that at this stage because we have completed the agenda um, unless there's something urgent that needs to be um, uh, said at this stage, I will uh, call for adjournment. Uh, Councillor Bell. 
uh, hopefully it is uh, looked upon as urgent, but TC Energy has hired a local municipal community liaison officer. We heard from him today, yeah. Clark Little, uh, speaking with Mr. Little. He will welcome anytime any counselor wants to bend his ear. He has told me, please give him a call. That opens the lines of communication. Thank you. You're right, and that, that's his job as I understand it here. Okay, having uh, completed the agenda as prescribed, um, this brings to a conclusion our agenda and I will declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you everyone, good comments, really appreciate your input. Bye.